Good evening. Hey, Tim, you're the first one in here. Good evening, Tim. Good to have you with us. Dollface, Ripley, Perez, uh, everyone coming in here. Welcome to the show. I'm going to have everybody here. And you're watching Encounters, the late night spirit. Hey, Rob, Tim, uh, everybody, uh, Medusa, Mike G. Thank you, everybody, for coming in here tonight. We were on this morning. Hey, JNM, good to see you. Hope you're doing really well. Diane, uh, Jin, Peace 51, good to see you. Diane Sadler, hey, Diane. Uh, Rita, good to see you, Rita. Power of Kindness, good to see you as well. Everybody, Sharon uh, Bout, good afternoon, or good evening. Christina, so we were on this morning. Hey, uh, good to see you, Chesno. Uh, definitely good to see you, brother. And um, it's just good to be here. We were on this morning. We had a great interview this morning. And that show is on my uh, Ashtar Command Spaceship News channel on YouTube. So when you get a chance, watch this morning's broadcast. Uh, we had a great show uh, about a person who was uh, in Illinois. And the story goes that he, there's two stories. Well, the second story is that he was taken aboard a spaceship and uh, he was with three space beings. And the other story, and it's a very interesting story, let me tell you. And the first part of his story uh, when this happened was that in a small town in Illinois, there was a big spaceship above the town and a being from off the ship that was surrounded by hundreds of so-called police officers that weren't police officers. You're going to have to watch the, the, the recording of that show for this morning. Uh, it's going to blow your mind. Um, so, yeah, definitely. Hey, Lavola, good to see you. I'm newest to your live. I like maybe my fifth time being with you. Oh, hey, uh, Jim Peaceful, well, thanks for coming here. Uh, you will find yourself being addicted to this because this is actually a real show. That's why so many people watch us because uh, we're not like other TikToks uh, where people are yelling over each other. And uh, that that's part of the norm that I've seen when I first got on here in 2023. And I came on with a with a de direct intention to create a, uh, a program uh, on uh, spiritual UFO areas and uh, being a contactee. So I'm glad you're here, Jen. Carolyn M., good to see you. Everybody coming in here, Field Cap. Hey, good evening. So we're going to have another great show tonight. Again, I always like to know that it's spontaneous. My show is really very spontaneous. And the thing is, what I love about it is I never know what story we're going to hear. Uh, we never know. I uh, hate Tim. Welcome to the show. We have people that come here and they've been abducted or they've had really beautiful direct contact with space people from other planets. We've had all kinds of folks. Hey, Misty Moon, good to have you with us. Tahar. And uh, we do have a goal. And we always would really encourage people during the show. I'm going to set my goal for something a little bit higher than, than the, the hat. And there'll be probably people that can do it and some that can't. But I'm going to actually, I'm going to set the uh, goal here. I'm going to go for something totally different. And if you're new to TikTok, uh, there are things called gifting, and it's a normal part of TikTok life. So if you're not used to that part of it, uh, it is a part of TikTok life. So I'm going to go for something that I haven't seen or done for a while, and I'm looking for it now. And one of the things I do enjoy is uh, there's, a, <coughs> there's, a, there's some of these things, these TikTok gifts, are really interesting. So I'm going to do a whale and I'm put a 10 whales as my thing. The whales are really beautiful. So I'm going to reset the goals here. We're going to, you know, obviously you can give us any kind of gift you want on TikTok. That's just up to you. But I like the whales. So I'm going to pin the whales. I'm going to pin 10 whales. And, uh, you know, uh, that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to start with the whales. We'll do different TikTok gifts. Also, go to my Venmo app. Uh, if you support all the work we're doing, please show your support by going to my link on my main page. Uh, so Venmo link on my main page. Just click the link. You may make a you know a spiritual donation of anything you want, and I'll just leave that up to the individual. Welcome to Encounters. This is a late night spiritual UFO talk show. I'm your host, Commander Alion. We're, we're glad to have you with us. Uh, Angie, good to see you. Uh, Joey, hey, uh, Joey, I, Commander, you cannot have the whales. They are mine. <laughs> uh, the whales are forgiving all over the world. Matter of fact, we love the whales. I was watching a news story about these whales that are playful. They took a, a, a boat. It was on the other day. They took a boat, and, and they were playing with the boat like it was nothing. It was crazy, you know. 
Uh, hey, April, I live, I love you, brother. <laughs> uh, same here, same here. Hey, one Toda, thank you for the roses. God, light, and thank you for being here. God, light, Bren, everybody. Hey, you know, we're going to have a good show tonight. I'm going to, you know, I always don't do this because I figure TikTok is doing it, but I'm going to do it because I have to make sure, you know, that I invite everybody to the show. That's right. So I'm doing, I'm going to do 15 people and then I'm going to do, we wait a while and do another 15. If I do too many of them at one time, TikTok doesn't like that. So I have to do it like gradually here. So we're going to send 15 likes, it's 15 shares. I mean, you can do the same thing. I know we all have cosmic friends all over the place. So, you know, do some sharing, let people that you think are really tuned in, you know, to come on here and watch the show. Uh, Roger, welcome. Raggy14, Karen Stevenson, welcome. Little uh, Louise, the service something. Well, thank you for the, the heart. Uh, good to have all the new people here, all the regular folks here. Uh, Cat Life, hey, Cat Life. Cosmic Christie, hey, Cosmic Christie. LL, thank you for the roses. We appreciate that very much. Hey, Jen, welcome. Uh, Rosie, Arizona, good to see you, Rosie. Anna, thank you for the share. Edward Halley, good to see you, Aaron. So I'm really excited in September for sure. We're going to be doing our, we're going to do a Ashtar Command Contact a CE5. So for, I know Chesno has been to our events. Chesno's with our Ashtar Connecticut group in New England. And we're going to do a gathering live on, we're going to be live on TikTok September the 14th uh, around 9 o'clock because we're going to get there at 8.30. So we're going to probably give it about 30 minutes to set up our camera on here and make sure we're in full power and we're going to do a live on the long island sound where we're going to do a spiritual prayer uh you know uh use the protocol uh to hark him we're going to use the the steven greer protocol from c5 we also have integrated the protocol with our own hey papa smurf good to see you with our own protocol hey jen welcome to the show thank you for the heart me uh and our protocol has an even more deeper part of it, which is not just doing the, the peaceful protocol that Stephen Greer has, but we're also going to do an Ashtar Command protocol, which is going to bring in our spaceships of light from the Ashtar Command. Uh, and we're going to do that on the 14th of September. Uh, next month, uh, we're going to try to set up a gathering at the Apple Orchard here in August. Uh, I'm just not sure when. It'll be before the full moon. But we're going to take it one step at a time on that one. If we don't do an August event, we're definitely doing, we're definitely set for September. So get your, you know, we're going to make a video for September and promote the September gathering for people in New England who want to join us. Uh, please, you'll be able to contact me on the video. I'll have my email. Uh, I'm one of the coordinators and there's um, other people that are coordinators, my friend. And they don't have uh, TikTok or social media, but they are my friend uh, Greg and Elaine here in Connecticut near me. And uh, we're co-coordinators of this event. Chesno's part of our group. And uh, we have a number of other people as well. So uh, we'll give you more information on that as we get closer. Honey McReynolds, welcome. Everybody, welcome to our program. Hey, Jordan, good to see you, brother. Uh, Derry Bingle, I think it is. Is it Bingle? Uh, Jessica Santiago. Kristen Creates. Hey, Kristen Creates. So if you're new to the show, welcome. This is You're going to love this show. If you've been scanning TikTok for weeks trying to find something interesting, you're not. To, you're going to be addicted to this show. Let me tell you something. Things happen here that you'll never, you know, Jojo, thank you for the heart of me. Things happen here that are out of this world. I mean, they really they really are out of this world. There's no, no way I can make any of this up. People that have watched my show since last year know all kinds of stuff has happened here on the Cosmic Weird, weird Way. Guardian, hey, Guardian, good to see you. Jay Bear, hey, welcome, Jay Bear, Julian, uh, Stephanie Grace, hey, Stephanie, Teresa Funmake, hey, Teresa Funmake, uh, good to have everybody here, and uh, we're going to get into some stuff, you know, it's, uh, it's just one of those things that things are rapidly changing, it's hard to believe in earth years, hey, Miss Jackie, they come to you in dreams, they sure do come to you in dreams, yeah, absolutely, Stacey Kayserman, thank you for being here, Ricky, Big Ken, Hey, Big Ken, welcome. Rick's, hey, Rick, welcome, Rick. Sunshine for UFOs, I think it is, or Chrissy. Hey, Chrissy, user 937. 
everybody come in hexen something uh these names come so quickly sometimes you know the candle the candle lady hey candle lady that's a good name sharon welcome good to have you with us lania hey lania uh brunette george something hudson brenda anyway everyone who's here welcome hey larry good to see you larry uh good to have everyone come rachel chase the list goes on and on and on of so many beautiful people here uh thank you uh, linda and that show this morning if people did see it that was an incredible show um and so that show this morning is on my Astro Command Spaceship News channel. We're caught up with all our shows. This show will be uh, this show will be on my YouTube channel by tomorrow. So I have no backlog shows. You can watch all my shows, but you're probably gonna have to stay home for a week just to watch every single show I've ever done. <laughs> probably. Uh, hey, Brittany, welcome uh, to our program. Uh, Booty pimple, burnt bacon. Hey, burnt bacon, welcome to the show. So the way we like to do things is we have a lot to share ourselves. We come from, we're a contactee. Oh, yeah, definitely. Thank you, Monica. You know, we're a contactee. We also, last night, and last night's show, not to forget last night's show, that was the most intense show I've ever done since I've been on here. So those that were on last night know what happened. We had a big deal to deal with, and we had one of our guests who is a well-known uh, psychic and has been involved in uh, in that world uh in uh, in the world of that area and we had she had two she had a, a major implant a living implant in her body in her head area in her brain area up near her back and whatever if you watched it last night i mean i had to go into astro command mode i mean i switched my consciousness and i connected with my space brothers and we sent the ship over her location in river blue and if you watch that show and you missed it you're going to see exactly what we did. And when we did send the spaceships over, the command, the medical team went in there. It took a while for them to get the, the implant out. It was actually a living implant. Now, I've never heard of that before. This implant was actually trying to stay in her, into her head area, into her, her back area. Uh, and it was a really, uh, it took a little bit of time. Hey, Lorena, uh, it took a little bit of time to get the implant out. And, you know, you could hear that she was going through some pain because this thing was really trying to stay in her body. And, uh, yes, hey, thank you, Carol. You know, it was real. And for me, it was very intense. And uh, I was like, I'm, saying, I'm not going to have any, I was, was going to have none of it. I mean, I was getting really uh, kind of upset with this implant that was in her. And we were going to, I brought the whole group of medical team in there and, uh, you know, we took the implant out, and I didn't personally take it out. The command did. So that implant was taken out of her, and it was trying to go back in when they got it out. I said, now that they got it out, they knew what to do. They quarantined the implant. It was a living implant, and I told them straight out, destroy the thing. Just destroy it. Whatever that means, destroy the implant, and they did destroy it. Yeah, and she did respond well to the treatment because it was to help her, you know. Uh, that thing was hurting her, and uh, they, they really got that out. And they had another implant in her, not as big, but they got all the implants out. There were two major implants in her body up in the upper area. And the command took them out last night. And uh, I was so happy for her. I had another guest on that also had implants. Uh, I did like two people last night. And that person, I had another ship go to another person with another medical team. And they took the implants out of the other person too. You know, so... If you watch my show, everything is documented here that I do. There's no hocus pocus. I don't have like, I'm not a magician. I don't wear a magician's hat with little, you know, handkerchiefs coming out of my pocket or whatever. Everything we do here is for the people of Earth. Everything I do here is for the liberation of the planet. And everything I do here is in Christ consciousness, always for you. Always for you. It's not about me. It's about all the people, all the life forms on Earth. When I came here to Earth, I didn't know my mission was going to be this great when I became an adult, but I do realize now I know so much more than I did when I was a kid. Um, if they, if she comes on, I will definitely will have a follow up with her. Um, but she should be perfectly okay. And matter of fact, we set up an Astro Command base in the desert where she is. It's for people that didn't know what was going on, I felt it was important that we have a little base. And some of the Astro Command people said they were really happy to stay with her. 
and uh, she's well protected. Uh, we did a lot of protection shields for her and her property, and uh, they cleared out all the energy from the negative ETs that were uh, saying they were going to come back for her. They're never going to come back for her because they're going to be they're they're gone. They they won't be able to come back at all. <laughs> I was not having it you know, about these negative ET things. Hey, Commander. Hey, everyone. Hey, Jess Parker. Good to see you, Bella. Good to see you, Bella. So yeah, I uh, you know I'm here to do the mission work as well as be a talk show host. And I thank God I have the ability to help people, you know. I do it unconditionally. And people that watch my show have known that, that from day one when this started eight months ago, I started having the ability to do this. I have taken the responsibility very rarely uh, seriously. And I don't just have ships go all over the place. That's not the way it works. They'll tell me when they need to do something like this. And I will say, okay, let's go here and help this person, you know. Thank you, Monica. Thank you. Oh, hey, Deanne. Oh, you cleared your catch? Oh, okay. So we're going to try to get Deanne on. I'm hoping we can. Deanne has a story to tell. You know, I am too, Diane. I'm really happy. You know, I'm happy when I can make help somebody get the implants out of their body and the implants are destroyed. And then knowing that the Astro Command can figure out where those ETs are and go after them, you know, because they will. They'll go after them. If they're in outer space somewhere, uh, then people have to remember, our ships come from all over the universe. They'll be able to find them, and they'll get them. The one thing the negative ETs don't like is the fact that the Astro Command is around, and the Astro Command can stop all these negative ETs. They don't like that now because that's exactly what's going to happen. You see, they probably don't like me. Well, they won't like me at all because... I work in the highest levels of Christ consciousness. They do not like that, you know, but I don't care, you know, because if I see somebody that's been abducted on my show, we're going to help them. You know, normally when we do an interview, we love the different stories. But the one thing I, I will do is help anybody who's been implanted by negative ETs. And we're going to catch those ETs. We're going to go after them. Guaranteed. The other thing we're going to do is take out the implants again. I don't do anything with the implants. We have a medical group within the command. Hey, yeah, kitty cat, welcome. That actually goes and actually does that. And they're very gentle about what they do. And hey, Johnny, they're very gentle about what they do when they help people. And um, I know Lorena uh, actually saw the space people uh, last night that were helping. They were showing themselves to her. And then she says they're very beautiful. She says they're much so beautiful, the Astro Command people. And they are. You know, when I tell you that our Astro people are beautiful, men and women, they are very beautiful men and women. All of them are. You know, they're of the highest levels of love, you know. Uh, Mars was like our planet. Mars is coming back, Lacey, to where it wants to be. Mars has some vegetation growing on the surface of parts of the planet. Uh, the Martian population is able to go to the surface of Mars, and it's way different than it was millions of years ago, you know? So I welcome all the new people here. One of the things I really do with my show, because it is a show, I am a very welcoming host, and I, I do believe that you should welcome all the new people, and, uh, you know, because they want to come here, and you know, they're, if you're curious about encounters, to give you a background, I am a contactee, so I'm going to define what that means so you understand it. I always want to make it clear so that I don't assume everybody knows what a contactee is. A contactee is someone who's had positive contact with space people. I've had that contact. I actually had it when I was a kid. They came to me outside my window in a spaceship, in a cul-de-sac. And uh, they told me when I came upstairs that they loved me and that I wasn't from here. And at first, I didn't understand that. You know, So for at least a week or two, I thought I was dreaming, but I knew it wasn't dreaming. And then as I got older, I can never forget what happened. I never forgot that one story. I knew all the details about what their spacesuits were like, their spaceship looked like, every detail about the spaceship. Never forgot. Never forgot. You know, as I got older, I became more activated, more awakened. I started meeting people as I became more uh, aware. And uh, to you know, jump up from there to today in 2024, uh, I'm not from this planet. I, I'm from the Ashtar Command. Uh, I have family on a spaceship. Johnny knows Johnny has family on the spaceship. Chesno has family on the spaceship. There's a group of five of us that are in here, Kit Kat, and then there's April up in Vermont. 
And uh, our friend April, if you don't know her, she's been off planet, uh, hey, Greta, over probably near 50 times already, you know, well documented. And my family is on that same spaceship as hers, Chesnos, uh, Kit Kat, and uh, Johnny. And we're all, we all come from that region of space where we all were, you know, we all know each other from space. It's a pretty amazing story. And what's really amazing to me as I think about it, how we're all in the geographical area of Connect of this region. Chesno's in Connecticut. I'm in Connecticut. Uh, April's in Vermont. Uh, we have Johnny in New Jersey. And Kit Kat is in Long Island. So regionally, we're all in the same region. And probably in about less than a year, all of us are going on a spaceship with April. Uh, and we're going to be going on a spaceship directly. You know, we're Connecticut boys. Yeah. You know, Connecticut boys. Yep. And we're all going to be going on a, a spaceship. Uh, and uh, it's an amazing story. But there's a mission to this whole thing. Uh, you know, if I was never on TikTok, I probably would have not met the people that I'm supposed to be with. Uh, it's just an amazing thing. Uh, yeah, the one that I was, when I was a, in my 80s, I saw a big ship. Yes, about two football fields in length right here in Connecticut. I had actually, two different times, I saw a massive spaceship. Um, so I always was being reminded that we're here in some way. When I was a kid growing up to now, uh, I had a lot of sightings just to remind me, Hey, we're here, you know? And I think for a lot of people, that is something that's happening now more than ever. I think a lot of people are coming forward on my show that, Hey, John, Tyler, good to see you that are actually starting to have sightings. Maybe someone's having visitations with their space family for the first time somewhere in the world. They're coming here to tell their story. What I love about it is my show is to bring people together from all over the world to share their stories, to come out of the closet, to say, yeah, I'm communicating with Bigfoot or Sasquatch. I have contact with the Mer people. I have contact with the fairies. A lot of people are starting to say, you know, I know fairies are real. I know they exist. And uh, are any uh, implants being removed tonight? Um, I hope I don't have to have that happen. Uh, I'd like to have a night where I don't have to do some mission work like that. But I never know. So if it does happen, we'll uh, deal with it and we'll help those people, you know, because we we will, you know. April, thanks for coming in here. One Life Love 685. Welcome. Tito uh, Bilia, uh, Joy Marino. Welcome, Joy Melissa. All the people coming here. Ron Chappelle. Welcome to our show, Encounters. So I'm a contact, the Inner Light Inspirations. I like that. Boy, that's a good name. I'm enjoying your channel. Thank you, Inner Light. I'm going to follow you, you know. Energy heal a medium. Ah, oh, very good. And no therapist. That's very good. Very good. I like your uh, your little profile there, Bella. Thank you for the uh, for the roses. I appreciate all the gifts. Uh, love Tiffy. Uh, thank you for the follow. So this show is a show really that is uh, a professional show. I do radio on NPR radio uh, for 21 years now called the Astro Command Radio Show. I also call it the Cosmic Guy. It's dedicated to the Astro Command. I've interviewed some amazing people over the years on that show. Hey, Jennifer, good to see you, sister. Good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Always good. Christopher Hick, welcome. A skip bomber, welcome. Always late. Hey, always late. You're not late at all. <laughs> I had to say that. Ron Frost, welcome. So we're, you know, hey, in a light, thank you so much for your gift. I appreciate that. Uh, so much, Sharon. So we'd love to interview people. And I will tell you, I'm really at this point, I'm like, if any more people are being implanted by negative ETs, like I said before, we're going after them. The Astro Command, there's a final thing going on on the planet and off the planet that you need to know. And I've come to an understanding of this in my meditations. So I'm going to share what I understand. You know, what I do understand. The government that is trying to stop to Tahar, Susan, the government that's trying to stop contact on Earth, they're really, really pulling all the strings right now. There are negative, uh, there are people that are negative government people that are working with negative ETs, and they're going to try everything they can do to stop direct contact with the people of Earth. I know this to be true. Uh, the fact that I've helped. I've had to have, make sure people have their implants taken out uh, and do it on my show, which I've done to document everything. And then these implants started 
10 years ago, some of them happened five years ago, some started recently. You know, they're trying to make sure that they're trying to slow down the possibilities of direct contact with the people of Earth. That's what they're trying to do. And uh, I know that the Ashtar Command will have none of it. I know I won't, and I'm very, really respected. My parents, Luna, uh, Robar, my sister, and everything are on the ship. The Ashtar Command watches my show every night. So for those that don't realize it, they have monitors on their spaceships. They can monitor every comment in here. They're monitoring my broadcast right now, and they're watching it. And they actually love my show. Well, yeah. So even though we have 224, maybe sometimes we'll have 400 people here, there are thousands of space people watching my show on the ships. It's pretty amazing if you can grasp that concept of reality, which I do grasp. Uh, the show's being seen by many, many space people right now who are with the Ashtar Command. The other thing is we're going to have none of this, this stuff going on anymore. The space people with the government have tried to destroy uh, space people in the oceans, living in the oceans. And uh, they've been trying to, they're actually, they destroyed a part of an ocean somewhere on the planet that is being now re redone. They're re-bringing back the life. The command is, is re-bringing uh, back all the vegetation, all the life. Many people have died uh, in the oceans uh, from the attacks that the government has been using reverse engineer technology from negative ETs that are, are loving the government, the people that are involved in this project, because they are trying to destroy all the life forms and beings that live in the oceans. And most humans don't even know that these life forms, uh, Greg 1212, I have an implant in my brain, but I'm afraid for anybody to take it out. Greg, um, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I've had people on here the other night. I, I t had people on here last night, two people. One would had a major living implant near their brain, and the command took it out. So don't be afraid. I know you're probably new to my show. Maybe you're not new to my show. I guarantee you, if you let, if I bring you up here, we will take that. In, we, I won't take the implant out at all. I will send a spaceship to your location, and we will have the Ashtar Command medical team take the implant out of your body. And we'll do that right on the show here. And by the time we take the implant out, you're going to feel so much better. You won't believe how much better you're going to feel. You know, this is what I mean, folks. There are people on our planet that have been uh, abducted and implanted with these implants, and I will have none of it. You know, um, if I have four people on my show as guests and one person has an implant out of three, we're going to help that person. I have to. If I don't help that person, then I'm not doing my mission work. Then I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. Priscilla says, I wish I could see an aircraft for the first time. Hey, Priscilla, well, we're going to get into how you can do that a little bit later. Hey, Natasha, good to see you. Natasha says, bye. Well, good evening, Natasha. You just got here? I don't know how long you were here, but we've only been on for a little bit. So you will. Let me just uh, see where Greg is. And let's see, Greg is here somewhere. Where is Greg? Let's see, is uh, Greg here? Greg, say hello. I want to see Greg. Where is Greg? Rob says, yes, help Greg. If I see Greg's pop up and saying hello, I will, hey, can disabled remove implants from us military? Can, the dis can they disable remove implants from us military? So, Anne... Are you saying you were in the military and you had an implant that was done to you by uh, ETs? I'm just trying to understand something here on your question. I want to make sure how I answer it. Let's see. Where's Greg 1212? Greg, don't be afraid to respond. I disappeared for a day. No, by the military. You disappeared, so you were taken... And you had disappeared for a day. Um, okay, and I'm going to bring you up here as our first guest. Uh, I want to get a better idea later. X-ray doctor said something, then said no, nothing. 
Um, hmm. I'm just uh, pondering my thoughts here for a moment. So, Anne, are you saying that you, oh, not tonight, love. I will follow up. I'm in the car. Oh, you're in the car? Yeah, we'll have you on another night, and we'll bring you up here. I don't deal with court cases. Uh, that's not my thing. This is a UFO spiritual talk show. I don't deal with any of that stuff. Um, no, I don't deal with that. You're going to have to get yourself a good uh, legal lawyer for that. I don't deal with any of that stuff. Oh, Leon, Linnea, yeah, you'll definitely get to see stuff. I'll get into it a little bit later. I'm just thinking there's going to be some people that are going to have some stories to tell. And also, I think, uh, of course, Greg, who had an implant, I don't know where he is, uh, but he's not, not there. Spill the tea so I can see. There you go, Priscilla. I like that. Love and light to all. Hey, Connie, love and light to you. Son, uh, Kenna, thank you for the follow. Peaceful welcome, buddy, welcome. I believe I have already had them dis disengaged, so I'm okay. I'm a curious person. Okay. Well, when we do have you on live, we're going to make sure that there's nothing still within your body from negative ET implants. A-Rod 2024, welcome. And I guess uh, that person that had the implants, they're just being quiet. Hey, sweetie, good to see you. So I guess I can add to my my uh, my bio here on the show is that I also work with the Astro Command and we go after negative ETs that have implanted human beings too. So you'll see that on my show too, that we do send out ships on live during the show and they go into the person's uh, place of living. Irish, well, thank you for the roses. And they work on getting the implants out of their bodies. And you'll see that happen on the show too. Uh, how do you up your chances of seeing UFO Commander? You know, Tim, the best thing to do is uh, download the C5 app. All the meditation is very key. With meditation and focus and the C5 app from Dr. Stephen Greer, if you download the app, if you have an iPhone, you can do it with the Apple uh, thing. Or if you have an Android phone, go to Google Play and the C5 app. Download it, and you'll be able to use like, the protocol of the app, and you'll increase your chances of seeing positive spaceships. That's a good way to do it. The C5 app for anyone out there. Good way to do it, for sure. Hey, Denny Boo 93 welcome. Yes, and meditate definitely helps. You know, meditation before anything else. Focused meditation uh, are very, very, very important. Yeah, Android phones, just go on uh, Google Play and look up Irish... Uh, Mount, uh, look up the Google app. It's a C5 app on Google Play. Download, it's like $9.99. Download and put it on your phone and just read the protocol. There's different tones that are used to make contact. It's very, very good. I recommend it to everybody. Uh, welcome to the show, Susan Burton. Dale Black, welcome. Oh, you're very welcome, Irish. J House, welcome. Uh, we more, hey, we more. LGA 111. Dennis, welcome to our show. Rio, I see all these new names. Rihanna, hey, Carol. Uh, Rihanna, welcome to our show. Encounters, NorCal, welcome. Pedro 867. Uh, Leah, welcome to the show. Sweet Denny. Uh, Condessa, thank you for the roses. We appreciate all your gifts, folks. And also, we want to get to about 100,000 likes tonight so we can do it. We're going to be on till probably 1, 1 at the latest, maybe, maybe 1. I think 1 or 1.30. Uh, so we'll see what kind of interviews we have tonight. And not only interviews, but again, if you have questions regarding the subject, uh, I can answer many of your questions. If I don't know the answer, I will certainly uh, tell you that. Can they pull it out of your nose? Absolutely, Greg. Uh, I'd like to bring you up. I just uh, pressed the guest request here. I've helped so many people. Some of them are on here tonight that are watching my show tonight that were, had implants the last week or two, and the command took all the implants out of their body. So if you have an implant that they implanted in your nose, they'll be able to take it out. 
and they'll also, also scan your whole body to see if they've done any other implants, be it in the head area, the, the any part of your body. So yes. Can they, can they do it privately? Um, this is really the best way to do it while we're on the show here. Uh, there's nothing to be afraid of. I can tell you that everybody here is supportive. People have watched the people, the space people that I brought over to their locations, the Astro Command people. They've watched it live where people had the implants taken out on the show. And um, this is the best way to do it right now. If you really want to do it and get rid of the uh, implants, uh, this is really the best time to do it. We have a good audience. No one's going to make fun of you. Uh, I've, I'm a contactee. I've been contacted by space people when I was a kid. Um, and I'm very much connected with the Ashtar Command. I work directly with the Ashtar Command, and I will make sure that we have a spaceship over your location. And while you're on with me, I guarantee you, if we do the breathing exercises and get you relaxed, they will come and take the implant out of your, out of your nose. And they will also scan you to make sure there's no other implants in your body. All right? You really, and you don't even have to be on camera. You just have to come on live. You can keep your camera off. Just come on audio. I don't need to see your face. I don't need to see anything. We can just do this that way. That's so in the sense, it'll be private, but we'll be able to at least talk to you, which is really important for me. I don't like to do it any other way than the way I do it on my show. Uh, I, I can't be effective that way. Yes. Yeah, so I want to help you. So you've seen them make contact with yourself, but they never came down, but they implanted you. So you must have had missing time. They must have somehow taken you on their on their spaceship to do the implant. You know, so I'm very interested in what happened to you. And I have an interest, not because I'm doing a show, because it's more than the show. I want to help you. And a lot of times I feel bad if I have a person that knows that they can use some help, but they don't want they don't take it. Because then you're going to continually have problems with those negative ETs, you know. And so the question I have is to you, is it more important that you um, stay hesitant and have the negative ETs still, you know, in control of when they want to come to you? Or would you rather have the freedom to release yourself from those negative implants? You really have a choice here, you know. And um, no one's going to force you to do anything. You can say, you know, I don't want to do this. Or you can say, Commander, I'll do it. I trust you, and you'll let me bring you on here, and they'll have the Astro Command take the implants out. You know, no one should have to live their lives with implants from negative ETs in their body, whether it's the nose, the arm, whatever. Those implants are to control you. And that's against universal law to begin with. You know, so I'm happy to talk to you, but no, I don't, I don't do it privately. I've made a decision a long time ago. When I started doing this, it's going to be done right here and now during the program. I'm not going to wait, you know, down the road to figure this out privately. It's got to be done here. It's got to be done now. That's just the way I operate. You know, and if you want to live with the implants, that's fine. If you feel comfortable having the implants in you, that's fine. I can't, I can't, I don't have any control over that. Is it free will universe, free will society? If you're comfortable with the implants, Fine, I'll I'll live with that, and um, you know I'll still honor you for who you are. Okay. But in the back of my mind, I'll always say, "Why, you know, I could have helped that person, and I know I could have helped them, but they didn't. They didn't step forward for the help, and they could have had no implants at all in their body. You know what I mean? So, Greg, I hope you're hearing every word I'm saying because this is coming from, you know, my spiritual heart trying to reach out to you, you know? And I know you're listening to my words. So, it, to me, everything's black and white. Either you're okay with the implants, and yeah, no, definitely, he has to have time to trust, you know? And as you watch my show tonight, it, it'll be pretty apparent the way I treat people on here. Anyone knows... How I do this show, I treat all my guests with dignity and I honor every single person on here. But when it comes to implants by negative ETs, that's the one thing I don't like. ETs doing that to human beings. For whatever reason, they chose you to be implanted. 
I just don't like it. You know, I don't like that they did that to people. You know, and if we take the implant out, we're going to go after those negative ETs that did it, and they will be caught. They'll be actually gotten to by tonight. After the implant's taken out, the Astro Command will find out where their ship is, and they will be actually taken out. When I say taken out, they'll be quarantined. So for now, if anyone has a story to tell, like Greg is pondering this over on his end of it, uh, you can come up. You have to be over 18. Uh, no smoking, no cursing, no drinking, no, you know, any of that stuff. No kids on the channel. Uh, again, you have to be over 18, no paranormal discussion. If you've been a contactee, we'd love to hear your story. If you're an abductee and you wish to come on here and talk about your abduction, I welcome that too. If you've had contact with people, fairies, the Bigfoot or Sasquatch, or know a lot about uh, the inner earth or the uh, Agartha network, we'd love to hear your stories. Deanne needs help. And let's see if Deanne can come on here. Deanne, uh, she said she cleared, cleared all her catches on her, uh, on her phone. Deanne, are you still there? Let's see if Deanne is still here with us. Okay, Deanne, I'm going to try to bring you up here. I pray that tonight is the night. So let me see, Deanne. Uh, if you accept my guest request, hopefully we'll have you up here. And press the multi-guest option. You'll see the multi-guest option. You can press that button there, and you should be able to come up. Yeah, we're going to get rid of the negative ETs if we can get her up here. So if she's cleaned her phone up on whatever was in the phone, we hopefully can get her up here. I just sent Deanne, I just sent you a request to come up. I don't know if you saw the request. It should pop up on the TikTok as like a square screen. And then you press it back and accept the request. Hey, Star Girl Jody, that sounds like a good name. Star Girl Jody, Linda, Carol, Alan Rodriguez, welcome. And again, if anyone has a story to tell, I know there's 224 people on my show here tonight. Out of 224 people, I know there are people out here that are having real contact, uh, that are contactees with real space people. Hey, Cat Life. Yeah, we'll get to that, I think, uh, maybe uh, in a little bit, I think. Well, uh, let me ponder that thought here. Uh, Nick V, Dr. Trina. Hey, Dr. Trina Park. Welcome to our show, Encounters. Dr. De M. Derek Jake Jakey. Uh, let's see. Mr. Nolan, welcome to our show. For new people, this is the number one spiritual UFO talk show on social media, Certified UFO. Welcome, you on Skywalker. This is the number one spiritual UFO talk show on social media. You know why? Because of what I do. Uh, it's not your typical nuts and bolts UFO talk show. We don't just deal with what was the spaceship material made of. We have people that are contactees, abductees, all kinds of folks in the cosmic, galactic subject area that have been on my show. Dave the Birdman. Welcome, Dave. That's a good name. So we'll see what's going to happen here tonight. Like I said, it's very spontaneous, and uh, we like to keep it that way. Uh, April, thanks for sharing the live. Perry Rogers, KK, welcome. HG, welcome. Yeah, uh, Tim, we'll definitely, I think, uh, do an update. Laura. We got a little update from Tim. Diane, welcome to the show. I'm going to bring Tim up. We'll start with Tim with an update, and then we'll also see if we can get some new people to share their stories. I know from, hey, Eugene, good to see you last night. Now I have to change my, um, because the thing went on the lighting deal here. I've got to move my thing closer to the light. Hey, Tim, welcome. Hey, Commander. I, I wasn't on the show last night. No, I know you weren't. 
Oh, okay. I thought she was talking to me. He must have talked to somebody else. Yeah, but you were on the show recently, so yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, as you know, they they <clears throat> Starship came last Saturday. Well, it came last Thursday. They left Saturday, and as you know, uh, I made contact. Um, I hadn't had any terror, not terror since then, none at all. Um, I've been sleeping rather well. Deep oh, good. Sleep. I've been dreaming a lot. Um, yeah. I've been astro projecting a lot, but far as night terrors, none. Um, but what I wanted to tell you, when I made contact and she spoke to me, well, her name is, is I call her Sam for short, but mm -hmm. Samara. And she Samara. said that I had, she was detecting some circulatory issues in my body. Mm -hmm. So I I went to my doctor and he's setting up an appointment for cardiologist. Um, I've got a call make the appointment, so I'm definitely gonna go get that checked out because oh, Sam good. definitely said that she I had circulatory issues. Um, so and I'm I'm gonna trust that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Tim, by the way, is one of my guests that was on when I sent the Astro Command to help him. So he's a, a good example of somebody that took a leap of faith in what I do here. And he's telling how he is now versus the way he was when I first talked to him. And what I'm telling you folks is what I do is real to help people unconditionally. And he's a prime example as a human being who had been uh, abducted and had problems. And now he can tell you things are way different. And they actually communicate, the woman communicated with him and talked to him. So everything here is very real for people and for him as well what he's experiences i'm so happy since last week that things have gotten so much better for you yes i am too and um you know my power went out and they um with the negative vts um that was around i hadn't had anything weird happen um everything's been good to go i'm definitely gonna go to the doctor um i'm hoping at least Sam will come back. She said she would, because um, sure. I want I want more contact. Um, she said she's going to start me off slow, and I'll start learning okay. things. Um, so Good. I'm satisfied with that. But I just yeah. want to let you know, because me and you hadn't talked since yeah. uh, the night. So I know we haven't. Yeah. See, so. and what the beautiful thing is, uh, she is with the Ashtar Command. She's one of the people of the medical team. And see, a relationship has come about where he's going to have never, ever, ever have any negative ETs around. Uh, they've cleared the energies in the area. They set up protections around his property, uh, my space brothers and sisters, and they, he has no more problems. He's going to take care of that situation that she mentioned. And uh, she will eventually contact you again when you are going to have contact. And she's going to do a very... Um, slowly so that you get used to each other mm. and but she's a she's a very beautiful person and uh i'm so excited that you're going to have contact with her again oh I, I called her she showed me a quick glimpse a beautiful redhead redhead okay yeah, beautiful redhead yep yep mm -hmm. oh so quick oh so quick glimpse yeah yeah um, yeah it, so it, you know yeah split second when she fully comes to the point where you have that relationship of total trust with each other she will uncloak herself and you'll be able to physically see her like you're seeing me on the screen. She'll be physically able to appear in a solid body form. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, this is great. I'm so excited, man. You know, well, thank you. And I appreciate you uh, and everything you do. And I will drop off and let you help somebody tonight. And I will just stand by and listen and watch. Thank you, sir. All right, Tim. Okay, brother. It's been a pleasure. It's really good to have you as a friend. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. You too. Bye-bye. All right. So this is his testimony to a person that had a negative abduction experience with implants and so many things going on last week. And I, I had this person on the show and the space people I sent there helped him. And he now has a relationship, a friend with one of the Astro Command women. And uh, they're going to have a, a relationship of contact with each other. And I am so happy for Tim that that's going to happen. That's the, what I do here, folks. You see, what I'm doing here really is real. I don't have like uh, 
a crystal ball. I don't have like pendulums answering questions. I don't have like a ribbon around my head. I don't have um, cards throwing up in the air. Uh, you know what I'm doing here. Yeah, he's people that who who watch the show with Tim. He's telling a true story about what happened after the command came and helped him. He's never ever going to have negative ETs come in his his energy field ever again. Not only do we send the spaceships to help people that have been abducted, we go after the negative ETs that that implanted and abduct and did abductions to people. Do you understand what that means? You know how much work and energy it takes for me on a show to do something like that when I when I bring people up here? Does anybody realize the energy that is put forth to try to do that? Now, eight months, nine months ago, nine months ago, I wasn't even doing this. But now that I've been given the ability to do this by my space family, I take full responsibility for what I do on here on the show. You know, hey, Sarah says, thank you. So I hope the people that could afford to do gifting Please show some gratitude and whatever gifting you want to do, do it. I got the whales. I got 10 whales set up here. I know the whales are a lot of TikTok coins, but, uh, you know, if you can uh, give me a whale once in a while, that would be good. Uh, I appreciate it. Sarah says, thank you for the heart. Every little gift that helps uh, doing the work that I do when I'm on here 95% of the time, you know. I do take breaks for the sake, you know, for the sake of, inner peace and just regenerating my energy with all the work I do, I have to take some time to break once in a while, and I do, you know? Thank you for all the gifts, Misty. Thanks for the fireworks. You know, everything, every little, every, every little gift helps. Let me see who we got here. I'm gonna take a look here. Jimbo, the flying Jimbo, we got Jimbo here. Jimbo, can you give us a little bit of a, like a comment? Uh, uh, Steph, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Steph. I appreciate it. And yes, we are actually you have to water my watermelons tomorrow. I, I gave it a day. My watermelons are doing great. And uh, one day, uh, one morning, maybe I'll go live at the micro farm area and I'll show you the watermelons that we're growing here, folks. We'll have to free. It's been so hot, though, it would be a lot of heat to stand out there with the live camera, but uh, Pete Star TV, hey brother, thank you, thank you so much, and I appreciate every all the gifts, all the people here. Shelby, I eat them every day, and in September, early September, we'll be picking our heirloom organic watermelons. I grow several variety of watermelons that are organic, and I can't wait to pick them. You know, and definitely tap that screen like Mar uh, one of my moderators posted. Everybody who taps the screen will help me get to 100,000. Please follow me if you're not following me and you're 246 people. Some of you are following me, but everybody follow me to get my followers up. I want to get to 100,000 followers. And uh, I want to reach out to as many people around the world as I can to do the work we're doing here. It's so important. Uh, oh, Bonnie, thank you for the whale. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Bonnie. Uh, I really do appreciate that. So, I'm a, uh, I'm really committed. And, I, you know, when I talk about the implants and the negative ETs, this is really the final battle. There is a battle on this planet going on, off planet. The negative ETs are working with our government, certain sectors of our government, to try to stop contact. That's what they want to do. If people ask me how to try to, how are they going to do it, uh, thank you, Peter. They want to do it, but they really will not be able to. They're going to try to destroy a lot of things <laughs> that are not known to humanity. They're going to try to destroy things. And um, good thing I have my apple cider. But they're not going to be allowed to do it, you see. And the negative ETs are going to be all found out. They're going to find them all over the planet, wherever they're hiding. They're going to be exposed, and they're going to be, thank you, Sarah says, thank you. Well, wow, I've never seen that before. They're going to be found out, and they're going to be dealt with. This is it. After handling so, helping so many people get implants out with the space people, you know, I'm at the, I'm now at the conclusion of my thoughts that every negative ET is going to be kicked off this planet. The spaceships are going to be not allowed near Earth. They're going to be sent back to wherever galaxy or solar system they came from, and they are going to be goners, man. You know, that's it. You know, 
Oh yeah, I'm letting people in. Uh, oh, Jimbo, the flying elephant. Oh, I definitely bring you up here, brother. I was just trying to figure out what uh, I try to find out what people want to talk about. So I'll bring up Jimbo. Uh, let's see, Jimbo. Let me see here. I see you're in the comment section. Uh, Miss Trent says, "Did the bad ETs have a different god? There's only one god, but the negative ETs, uh, they don't care about uh, the creator. They just want to do their thing, and that's what they do. They don't care. But we do. The space brothers and sisters of the Ashtar Command from old planetary systems, they care very much. We care very much. I care very much." Many of you care very much. And let me see here. Jimbo, let's see. Jimbo is here somewhere. Oh, there he is. I'm going to bring Jimbo up. Jimbo, uh, let's see. James, we'll bring James up here. And James will be our second guest on the show here. Uh, James, if you see the request, uh, press the accept button or go on the multi-guest icon and we can bring you up. Hello world 0377, kind of deal with mind control. If the mind control is coming from the negative ETs, we can stop that. But if it's generally mind control, I, I, I don't deal with that specifically like that. I'd have to know more what you mean. Well, God didn't create bad ETs. Bad ETs, it's like human beings. This planet has humans on it. Now, when the ba babies are born, they're not born uh inherently uh being negative people they're babies free will universe you know in the free will universe some beings uh you know as they mature they become whatever they are but and in, uh inherently god did not create life forms to be negative that happened under free will and they made a choice and it was not always a good one so yeah good question Good question. And uh, Jimbo, we'll bring you up if you're still on here. And if you want to be a guest out there, people, hey, Diane, uh, Deanne, I'm going to bring you up here. I, I'm going to, Deanne, I want you to press my multi-guest icon. Deanne, I want you to press the multi-guest option. Okay? I want to get you up here. Can you press the multi-guest option? You'll see the little people. It says host, whatever. Let's see if we can bring uh, D Deanne up. She's had a situation go on here. I'm really trying to help her. And uh, we're going to try to get on here. And every time I send her a request, I'm not able to get her on here for some reason. Am I going to be able to do it? Let's see. Deanne, I'm pressing my thing here. And I'm not giving up on you. I'm trying to get you on here. I just pressed the guest request. I sent you a request to come on live. If your phone's working properly, hopefully you get it and you come back on my uh, live uh, screen here. Let me see if that's going to work. Deb says, hello, please tell me signs and symptoms of having been implanted. Uh, let's see, Deb. I'm going to get Deb up here, and I'll be able to try to find out a little bit more about what she's talking about. Where is Deb? Okay, where is Deb? Let's see here. So if Deb responds, I'll, uh, Sonia, thank you for the uh, gift. Deb, are you here? Deb, say hello to me on the screen. I'll bring you up, and I can answer your question. Okay, there's Deb. We're going to bring Deb up here. Deb, we're going to bring you up on audio. And I just sent Deb a request. Unless my requests are not getting the people and they're being whatever. Ah. <sighs> Hey, Chesno, welcome back. More for you. You know, you think when you send the requests out that people are getting them. Some people are getting my requests to come on live. Others are not. So let's see here. So, Deb, I want you to request to come on live on your side. 
Ah, good, good, Chesto. You got the lime and orchard cider. Good, brother. Deb, press the request icon. There's a request icon on your side of your TikTok. On your TikTok screen, you'll have the ability to request to come on live. Look for that uh, little icon. And we'll bring you up. Usually, it's pretty easy for people to get on here if they uh, use the request mode. You know, it's easy for me to talk all night, but I'd rather have uh, the ability to help some people and interview people here. So, Deb, just press the icon. It's a multi-guest button on the bottom of your screen. And call thank you. It's a multi-guest button on the bottom of your screen. So everybody has that. All the TikTok screens are the same. They should be. A multi-guest button on the bottom of your screen, Deb. Okay, I think Deb's got it. I hope. Okay, I just saw somebody press the request button, but I don't see them. Whoever pressed the request button, press it again. You pressed it and it disappeared. So whatever it was, whoever, if that was you, Deb, press the, uh, the multi-guest button. Press the multi-guest button on the bottom of your TikTok screen. It's on the bottom of it. It's next to on my screen. It says host. Guess on your screen, it might be something different, but it's a multi-guest option. Welcome to Encounters, all the new people. I'm Commander Leon, your host from Mars. I'm also here to bust the matrix. I'm also here to help people. I also take, uh, I bring the Astro Command to people's locations. And on my program, we have the negative implants that are in their bodies taken out. And we go after the negative ETs uh, as well with the Astro Command people. So we're a little bit different than your normal nuts and bolts UFO show where they wear suits and ties and interview former generals. We don't do that here. If it does happen, we'll take it, but we don't, you know. Hey, Kit Kat, welcome back. But I've had no generals come on here to spill the beans, so to speak. Well, this has been a tough night trying to get the people on here for the interviews. Uh, you know, you think the technology would be more uh, conducive to working with us here, you know. Welcome, Paul, Danny, Bandito. Welcome, Danny, Peggy, Ann. And again, uh, hey, Butterfly, good to have you with us. If you've been abducted truly by negative ETs and you need help from that situation, I'm here to help you out. If you've had positive contact with space people and, you have a, and you've been really in contact, I want to hear your story. Uh, so please feel free if you've had sightings recently. Uh, Butterfly says, I've saw them a couple of times. Okay, Butterfly, if you will, um, uh, if you press the multi-guest option, I'd love to hear, hear you uh, speak. You know, if you press the multi-guest option, I just saw your comment. I'd love to interview you on the show here. Star Science, welcome. So if you're not sure how to go live with me, just press the guest icon. Okay, let's see if we can bring this person up. Ah, this one is, there we go, it's working. There we go. You'll be our third guest on the show this, this evening. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? We're doing good. You know, it's been kind of tough to get people on here. Some people technically are not able to get on here. You got on here, no problem, so welcome. No problem. So, so let's talk about what you mentioned in the comments to our, our viewers. Thank you so much for the gift. Uh, thank you, Kit Kat. Hello. Uh, tell us, tell us about your experiences. Um. Well, actually, it was a long time ago, and uh, it was basically uh, like a sighting of uh, some type of a UFO. I didn't really have any contact. I didn't get abducted or anything like that. I just uh, saw the, you know, the object, the actual oh, object. Oh. And it was uh, basically um, very like um, almost like a fast forward button. When I saw mm -hmm. it, 
and it was like a light, like a just like a really bright light. Mm -hmm. um, but the cool part was that I wasn't alone, and the people that were with me saw it with me. So oh, I wow. know I wasn't just crazy. Right, right. And what year was that? Do you remember? Uh, that was, it was a long time ago, um, but it was around um, probably, I would have to say in the 90s, uh, probably the 80s, late, late 80s. 80s. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. And it's interesting how we never forget those experiences, right? When you have it, it's like ingrained in your consciousness forever. Exactly. I mean, so, I speak from experience, but you go ahead. So you had the visual experiences. I'm glad, and it sounds like you had really positive visual experience. Did you feel anything like when people tell me their stories, like a sighting of a spaceship? How did you feel standing there watching this object? Mm, I felt like it was surreal. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a kind of some sense of peace and happiness in a way mm -hmm. afterwards mm -hmm. because. You know, it's just something that you wouldn't expect to be able to get to see. Right. And um, so I feel like it really bonded me, like really closely with the people that I was with as well. Uh, you became more friends with each other over the years? Yeah, like we, um, you know, had just more like closeness in our relationship. Mm. Oh, beautiful. I love that story, you know? Yeah. And just, so... and just think a, a spaceship from another world is there and it brings you all together because you all saw the same thing. It's like, it's not like you saw it or the other person didn't see it. Well, didn't you see it? You were just standing here. No, I didn't see anything. They all saw the same thing you saw, right? Exactly. And I remember it was just like a pure white light. Mm -hmm. You know, you would think that it would be like maybe some other type of different lights or something something flashing or something like that but it was just yeah it's such a clean and pure like white light and it literally felt like time stood still for a second yeah it probably did i think uh it probably did at the time you were looking at it and i would gather to say uh from what you're telling me that there were very positive beings on that ship that were there for that moment did you feel and this is really interesting from all the interviews I've done with these experiences with contact or visual contact, that uh, usually it's a group of people and that either the whole group sees it, the one person's by themselves and they see it. And I'll ask people, did you see anyone else around you? If you're like in your sense, it was a group of people, you all saw the same thing. You all experienced the same thing. But outside of that group, I would imagine maybe no one else saw it. It was just your group that was there at the time. This thing appears right there where you guys are and he had says, here we are, uh, we're showing you who we are, get a good look at us because we're leaving. Does it yeah, feel like it was like that, we're gonna show you and now we're gone, we're going back off planet? Yeah, and it was just like, literally, I know they did it on purpose or something, mm -hmm. um, just because we were all together, it was just too obvious. You know, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. it wasn't just like a single person by themselves. And, you know, like I would have thought that I made it up if I wasn't with other people. I would have been like, wow, did I just make that up in my head or something? Or, you know, mm -hmm. so um, I feel like that definitely, you know, was on purpose. And um, it's really funny because it's the same group of people that later on, we had other experiences just as three and we were bonded in a way that nobody can come against our bond together no well, matter how now, hard things get no matter how much time passes mm -hmm. let's get into that you just opened up about more experiences with just the three people tell us about that uh well it wasn't necessarily that we spotted more you know like ufos or anything but um there was just uh, instances where uh, we would, it would be the three of us together. And um, there was just like an inseparable bond that we mm -hmm. shared together. Uh, like we built uh, an igloo out of uh, snow 
when we lived in mm -hmm. Colorado at the time. Oh, okay. And we were all sitting in this, we climbed into the igloo and we're all in there together. Mm -hmm. And we promised each other that we would never leave each other. Mm. And, you know, like, even if we can't live close together, it's like we still like nothing will stop us from loving each other and right, being you bonded have to each inseparable, other. Inseparable bond. You, you're, you're bonded forever as friends. Yes. And it's it's kind of frustrating in a sense now that I'm older, I'm married and, you know, my husband knows um, you know the the closeness that i have with these people and yeah. i don't know why he has a problem with it but it's like he's constantly there's constantly like this friction of you know trying to kind of like you know not make me feel the special bond that i have with them mm -hmm. when it's like i don't know what made us that close mm -hmm. if it was the sighting that we saw together if it was the igloo that we were together in or what it was, right. but it's just like, you know, there's just something about those two that mm. I just, there's nothing that can, can break it. I'll always have it, that, that special you know, place. I think it was the sighting. I think the sighting, the beings on that spaceship were very positive. I'm getting like, I read people's energies from their stories and they were very positive. They wanted you to they all wanted you to see it and then out of the group of people the three of you became bonded did the igloo thing together but there's a lot more to it than that i think uh the potential for contact is very great for you and your friends um have you tried to in your meditation or in your life as you become married and have your life now with your husband and everything have you ever thought of wanting to make contact with the beings that were showing you their ship uh no Ever? i haven't no? okay no I but to, you know i feel like curious. yeah i do feel like um i'm not sure like i don't want to throw in anything there that can't be like literally like kind of like proven i guess in a sense right but right right i know that there is um multiple times um as i started getting older and i would be going through different things in my life where mm -hmm. I would um, I would request assistance, and mm. right away somebody would show up, like multiple times. So I would always say that it was angels, mm -hmm. but I honestly feel that maybe those UFO things or whatever the light things, I I don't know. It could have been angels. It could be angels still. Like. You know, maybe that's what it is mm -hmm. because so many multiple times that I uh, I would ask for assistance, like um, I was in a, a really like bad position and I just didn't want to be alone. I needed comfort. And so like within the minute that I said, you know, I, I believe in God. So I said, God, send me assistance. And within the minute somebody pulls up in a, a white uh, vehicle um, with white clothes on and says, hey, you know, and he calls my name. He says, did you want me to wait with you? And because that's what I said. I said, you know, send somebody to wait with me. So it's almost like um, I'm not sure exactly how or why, but I just feel like, you know, whatever that was back then it was kind of like the same thing again when i asked yeah. for assistance so no so i'm, I'm going to jump in here because you find it fascinating what you just said i listened really keenly to every single word you said you asked for assistance are you telling us and uh, i'm agreeing that you had the experience that a uh, person showed up wearing white and in a white car and they said car. my name they said, hey, you know, they said my name. Did you want me to wait with you? Like, I don't know any other way to explain it. No, you know, that they showed it, up it, that fast. It, yeah. I mean, you're, you're saying as clear as bell. One of our viewers says, and it's true, that the angelic beings have spaceships too. People don't realize this. We think of angels as being, uh, you know, the uh, which is angels. There are many kinds of angels. But the angels do have their own planetary worlds. And uh, they do have their own ships, believe it or not. And so I think that that angel 
might have been part of the beings that were on that ship that angel came to you and i think you're right there are angels that you were saying the angels wasn't the ship the angels were operating the ship that your your friends saw that you saw and you are connected with the angels so that is your connections were physical with the angel when that car came up that just that just uh, validates what i'm trying to ask you you did have a real experience with the angels uh the angelic being and that's a beautiful story that really is a beautiful story you know yeah it's, I love that you know it it really uh it, it changed my life forever it really mm -hmm. you know made me just believe in the supernatural and mm -hmm. i realized that we don't have to understand and we don't have to be able to explain the supernatural mm -hmm. including ufos all we got to do is believe that's it and that's everything it. else is going to work out you know how true that is if people would only accept the fact there are people that there are people that really uh, fight uh, the whole idea in their mind that there's any life elsewhere in the universe and they aren't they do exist in our world let's face it we have billions of people everyone has different belief systems different ways of thinking what you said is so true if people will let go of their belief systems and what they've been taught in our textbooks in schools and by their science classes and by all their teachers and by all the textbooks that are out there and for all the religions one thing I do is I like to bust the matrix. So my goal is to bust every single matrix on the 3D world called Earth to where people do exactly what you're saying. If people are just willing to believe that there is existence of beautiful things beyond Earth, there are things that we can't explain on our own planet on the uh, beyond our surface world that we don't know that, the, that there are space people living on our oceans. There's all kinds of life forms on Earth besides just human beings here. Uh, we've talked about Bigfoot, Sasquatch, the angelic people, the fairies, the mer people. They all exist. If people just will believe that they exist, that is the biggest step forward a person can make. And you took that step of belief. And when you told me about the angel, the being in the white, the white, you know, the white outfit, the white car, they were telling you, hey, we're here. So, you know, the space people, the angelic beings who are from space, they will, they came in the way you would be able to present, you know, accept them come in a car, wear a suit, you know, that's what something a human being would do. So they came in a way that would be comfortable for you to make you feel comfortable, and that's what they did. And that's, that story is so beautiful, what you just shared. It's the most amazing story I've, I've heard. Very beautiful. Um, yeah, so um, I feel like time kind of did stand still when I was sitting in that vehicle. Mm -hmm. Just the trust, uh, the amount of trust that it took to get into that vehicle, you know, was you just... Were you and you were sitting in the vehicle that was there that came there with the being how tall was how tall was that person you remember um they appeared to be uh not too tall what by five nine five eight five seven um well they were sitting down so oh, um they were sitting down okay i couldn't so really like up. <laughs> no they were sitting they they drove up in the little car but it was mm -hmm. just like unreal almost just because they came wow. up and said my name right away and said, did yeah. you want me to wait with you? And right, I was see? out in the middle of this desert and wow. they brought me into the vehicle. So, you know, it's like I didn't get abducted, but I felt like I stepped into that realm. Right. Now you're in the middle of a desert. Where was the desert? Can you explain where that was? Um, well, it was in El Paso, Texas. El Paso, Texas, in the desert. Well, you were in the desert. Was there any other vehicles around or nothing? Uh, there, it was a gas, there was a gas station. Um, it was back when there was pay phones. Oh, pay phones in the, old, in, the, in, the, in the old days, right? <laughs> yeah, the old days when there used to be pay yeah, yeah, yeah. phones. So. <laughs> I, I remember um, those, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I, I called my dad on the pay phone and I'm like, dad, you know, come and get me something, you know, went wrong with this whole, I was having um, a time that I was getting closer back to my belief system and things like that. And my mm -hmm. friends um, kind of exploded at me, the people that I was with, um, mm -hmm. and they weren't respecting my, you know, I was having an awakening, a spiritual awakening, and they weren't respecting it. So I got out of the vehicle and, um, you know, I hid from them so that they would just leave me alone and that I could find mm -hmm. an alternate method of going back to my house without wow. dealing with their yeah. disrespect. 
So yeah. I was in like a hard spot in my life. And so um, I ran through the desert with no shoes on. And it was just a miracle because my feet didn't even get a sticker in them or anything. Really? Like, I was protected. Nothing bit me. Nothing came up to me. Nothing. Like, you know oh what I mean? I was so, mm -hmm. And there's been so many times in my life that I feel like I have been protected. So I don't mm -hmm. know if that, you know, sighting that I had did something to give me some type of supernatural belief and mm -hmm. maybe powers. You well, know, I, I, I think, feel like. Yeah. Reading your energy. Certain... Yeah. You were definitely given something. The angelic space people that were in that ship with your friends, that sort, that being in the desert and you telepathically, you called out and telepathically, they heard you. So what they did is the space people, the angelic space people came in a car, a little car, a white car, and in the middle of the desert in El Paso, and this man, uh, it was a male figure, right? Yeah. Am I correct? Yes, That's sir. out, responds to your call, and physically shows up in a little car. Now, I can tell you stories about my late friend, Dr. Frankie Stranges. He used to live in Las Vegas. He was a minister. He was a law officer. I interviewed him on my show many years ago before he died. He had contact with a space person called Valiant Thor. They would do is they come with an old car from the 50s, and they'd come and pick him up and take him out to the desert out near Lake Mead. And uh, this is all true. And he would go on their spaceship. But they would come wearing, like, old outfits, like old suits, and it was out of place because they were wearing stuff was from the 50s, and they pick him up and they take him on a spaceship called Victor One. So in your story, is very uniquely similar that the angelic beings, at that one point, all your friends see that, that bright light. Then you get visited in the desert in the middle of nowhere almost with the gas station out. It's almost like a, a movie to be made, what you're talking. It's almost like there should be a movie made about this. It's such an incredible story. And then the, the car, a white car, folks, listen to this, a white car. I'm not ignoring any comments here. I'm, I'm really watching and listening to the story. So I will get to your questions. So I don't feel I'm ignoring you, anybody out there. Um, but you have this thing happening, which is amazing. I'm just picturing this white car in my head and you're out in the desert and they come there to respond to help you and you get in the car. Uh, with the the being how did you feel sitting next to this person i felt like there was such a peace that was inside of me that i was safe that i was listened to that i was cared for mm. um there was no pressure um you know usually like i don't i don't want to be like anything but a lot of the times it's like usually if it's a guy then they're like hey baby give me your number and this no nope, it wasn't like <laughs> right. Right. you know was, i didn't feel any pressure right. it was <laughs> about that you know so um it was just so respectful and just mm. like the utmost care mm -hmm. and just the way that they showed up it was with within less than one minute less than one minute less than wow. one minute they were there and they came out of nowhere, right? Yeah, they came out of nowhere. And then, you know, afterwards, I didn't even think about anything. It was just like I was in this zone, this mm -hmm. complete zone until my dad got there. He got there, picked me up, and the guy was gone. But mm -hmm. it was just like almost like I was in a time warp again, sitting yeah. in that car. Now, when the guy in the white car left, how long was it? When did he leave? When your father was getting close to where you were, or when did the 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 person in the he white made car sure, leave? He, yeah, he made sure that I got that I was with my dad and that I was safe, and then he mm -hmm. left. And then he left. So my so dad, dad ended up seeing him too. He ended up seeing him. He did. So tell me about that. What did your dad think when he saw this person with the white car? My dad, I don't. He was my stepdad. And mm -hmm. I honestly still believe that he, I know this sounds out there, but I feel like he was kind of like an angel himself. Oh, your he dad? Passed, he passed when he was 57 years old. Um, mm -hmm. God rest his soul. But, you know, um, just the whole time that he was here, mm -hmm. he was like really like on a mission. He was definitely yeah. on a mission to be there to, to help my mother um she transitioned 
into mm -hmm. eternity um, when she was only 42, sadly. Wow. Oh, wow. I'm sorry to hear that. But Thank it's interesting. You. Your, dad, your dad appeared and the being, the, the male being uh, in the little white car wearing the white outfit obviously wanted your dad to see him before he left. I feel like he was connected to them like deeper than mm -hmm. I know. And I feel like, right. you know what I mean? He's still like, he came into my mom's life um, after mm -hmm. something like horrible. So I feel like he is a part, he was a part of that whole, the light system, right. whatever right, that right. light system is. Right, right. Wow. Well, you're just an incredible guest. Uh, again, it's just uh, I, what I love about this show is people coming out of the closet like you and and taking a chance with me and coming on here and your your show i mean your show your your story is beautiful uh it's an amazing yeah. beautiful story i completely love the story i i can listen to it forever and i can actually when you told the story about the desert i'm sitting here i'm sure many of my viewers are sitting here and i'm actually seeing images of the small car it's almost like it's this old looking car it was like an old looking car sort of old it was it was a white it looked like um it was a, a truck it was this very a very small truck with a white camper on it it was a white truck with a white yeah. camper yeah so it had a camper and, on the back like it was you know what i mean like right. those i don't know what else to call it if you had to take a look at the timeline of the truck with the camper on it would you say it was like a 50s 60s thing or what would you say like an um, older type i would say it was probably 70s yeah probably 70s right and and again what year was this just to recap for people just coming in we have some people just uh, coming in for the first time on the show what year was this uh, just for new people um uh, it was around um 90 the early 90s okay so okay so the camper is a light camper small uh, with like a truck camper thing, 70s stylish. Uh, so, okay, so you're talking 1990s. That's pretty amazing. That is, you know, I'm just trying to image the whole thing in my head. I try, I do that sometimes. I kind of uh, get an image of where you were. Yeah, um, this was, is a great. Like just the fact that he was wearing white, but he didn't have one speck of dirt on him too. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He looked like he was a painter um and that maybe he worked and that was his work truck or something but there was no no dirt you know it was so clean it was such a clean mm -hmm. truck a clean outfit everything was so like you know very white so it was mm -hmm. yeah it was pretty amazing yeah and, and then uh, my moderators uh i just want to just say my moderators be aware of comments uh on here even though we have a big talk show here, sometimes we get people in here that uh, we'll have to take out and uh, we will take them out. So if you are here to uh, be negative, understand as host of the show, my moderators are to take out anybody that starts being negative, we'll take you right out. So be very careful what you do here because uh, this is an actual professional talk show and, all, and most of my people are good. But I start one or two, one possible negative and we will take that person out or mute them out. But I, I just uh, think your story is uh, incredible, be incredibly beautiful. Uh, you know, I've been around the block a lot of times in this on this on this earth with the whole subject, and I've had my own experiences since I was a kid with the space people. So I completely honor the stories I hear. I think your story is very unique because you did have that experience with the angelic being, and uh, no one can take that away from you. And there's not one person. You know what? The funny thing is. For people that have none, have no experiences like this, it, it's over the years I've learned when people judge somebody without being in their shoes, they should just stop, buy some shoes, and learn how to walk in them. You know what I mean? Uh, learn how to walk in the, in the shoes before you start responding to somebody's stories. Or And everybody has a different story. Uh, you know, we've helped people with abductions and had implants taken out by our space people. As you watch my show more, you're going to see you'll be addicted to the show. There's a lot of beautiful people that are up all over the world. And once in a while, we do get those people that want to do their thing. But we we stop it. We dip it in the bud like in two seconds. You know, awesome. Uh, uh, so you're an awesome person. Thank uh, you. you know, and if anything happens again with the angelic being, let us know. I, a matter of fact, you know, it's whatever is to be. You know, you had the contact. Well, 
Yeah, it's it's actually um, another time that I was kind of in another rough spot again. Um, my husband and I had, you know, been going through some stuff or whatever. And, you know, I stepped outside into the front and I and I did the same thing. I asked for assistance. And once again, within the minute, they showed up in my front yard. And oh, let's, let me, let me slow me. you down. See, I didn't know this. So let, now let me slow down. You see, you got me here. When did that happen? That was more recent. Um, that was probably like about um, maybe nine years ago. Nine years ago. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't like too, too recent, but it was recent enough. Right. So, so when now before they appeared at your in front of your house, what did you say in your thoughts that brought them to you? I said, send somebody to talk to me. I, I'm I'm lonely. I need somebody to talk to. Send me comfort. That's all you said, and they were there. Within the within the minute again, it was they just showed right up, and they were out there actually sitting there talking to me. And my husband comes out, and he's like, "Get off my property!" <laughs> Are you serious? He said that to them. He says, get off my property. Oh, yeah. He's like, get off he, my he, property. He, you your know? husband obviously is a really nice guy, right? Oh, yeah. I, I, so. yeah. I can see what he would say if other space people came uh, off a ship and they started saying, we just want to say hello. And he says, get off my property, get back on your ship and leave me alone. <laughs> yep, exactly. You know, I, I get the feeling. So how did they respond to your husband when he said that? They said, you know what, you're what, you know, I saw a lady here needing assistance and I stopped. Mm -hmm. I yeah. stopped for assistance for the lady. Yeah. And it was wow. just, I mean, it, it, it floored them. It literally yeah. floored them because, you know, who's going to stop and actually care if he's making his wife right. upset or not. Right. You know, nobody does. Did, now, after you started yelling at these, how many of them were at, at your house when they came? It was one, one, Only one, one guy. So the one guy, after he got done yelling and screaming at this one guy who was obviously not from this planet, and he starts yelling and screaming at him, did what happened when he got floored? What did he do after he got done yelling at him? Uh, he was, you know, getting me back in the house. Get in the house. Oh, he wanted to rush you in the house. Yep. He didn't, he wanted he didn't to get want me you away to, from him. Oh, he didn't want you to communicate with this being at all, correct? At all. You know, that's a no. terrible, you know, I hope your relationship's going okay these days, you know. Um, yeah. You that's going to be rough. One day at a time. That's all we can do, right? Well, you just you just be who you are. You continue having contact with those with that space person, that angelic space person. That's your right to do that. Whether he likes it or not, if he comes back and you call him and he comes to your property, you tell your husband to go in the house while you're talking to him. <laughs> I know, right? I want you to promise you you'll do that because anybody who's a husband like that, whether it's a husband or a wife doing the same thing, it doesn't matter which gender you are. If you tell your wife or your husband and you're yelling at your husband, he's outside talking to a space person and says, get in the house. <laughs> I wouldn't listen to that. I wouldn't put up with that for a minute. I'd say, well, if you're, if you're afraid and you're getting angry because you're afraid of what's happening here and you don't understand it, you go in the house, Buster, and I'm going to be out here and I'm going to do what I want to do. And you're not going to tell me what to do. And yeah. You just, I've learned a you know. little bit more. Like I stand up for myself a little bit more, but it has taken oh, me a long time to be able to stand up for myself. So. Yeah. 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 One yeah. of my members, one of my people here said he's full of fear. So the anger that he has that he's yelling out, which is true. Nature whispers. You're right. Uh, your husband's probably a fear of what is existing because he doesn't understand it. So he gets yelling and screaming because he's afraid. So it's easier for him to lash out at you and say, get in the house because your husband's afraid of this being, this person, this angel that's in human form visiting you out of nowhere, comes there in two seconds, they're right there. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. He can't yeah. understand it. And it's funny because even to this day, like um, less than two weeks ago, um, there was something that happened with um, one of our kids and um, I was calling um, my, it was my daughter and I was calling her husband and he didn't answer the phone. And then somebody else called him. He wouldn't answer the phone. 
And Mm then um, it was an emergency. You know, I had to get a hold of him. So I Mm -hmm. said a simple prayer. I said, you know, God, help this, help him to answer the phone. And within, you know, a couple of seconds, nobody, he wouldn't answer for anybody. And as soon as I prayed, it was like he answered right in front of my husband. So my husband had to see the power, you know, that it's like God has given me um, some type of a power or something or these angelic beings or whatever it is. Yeah, angelic beings, yeah. To well, actually gonna... be able to, you know, to do things like that. And he witnesses it nonstop. He always sees it happening with me all wow. the time. This is your son, correct? Um, what who's, do you mean? The one that, who's seeing it all the time with you, your husband or let's backtrack a bit. Who's the one seeing it with you all the time? You mentioned um, seeing it... with you. Yeah, no, he doesn't, he's not singing with me. He's, okay. um, he's. Seeing it, seeing it. Yeah, no, I, no, I didn't say seeing. I, I said uh, seeing, seeing it. Oh that's yeah, seeing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. If he was singing, yeah, that's a different sees, story. But he, I know what you he mean. sees. He sees things happen with me all the time in the supernatural. Right. Like, you know. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, is like, I haven't been given like the easiest life, but it is mm-hmm. a powerful life. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you know, things that I really want to happen, they haven't happened yet. But it's yeah. like the little things, you know, the little things that I need to happen, happen somehow. You know, yeah. it's like a supernatural um, gift that that has been bestowed upon me. Yeah. And I literally, honestly do think that it was that day that all three of us that were together got that same power yeah. just by looking at that light. I feel like right. that, that power came to us, yeah. into us, and we still have that type of power somehow it's like a prophetic type of you well know. you know what it is the angelic space beings what they did was as i said before certain people are chosen with contact with the star people and this then the angelic beings are star people they come from planetary systems in the angelic world and they have families they live and breathe and they have their own homes on their own planets but on earth we don't know that because we've been taught a limited understanding of the angelic beings and i know a lot about the angelic beings so I think all three of you have similar abilities now that they gave you where if you ever needed assistance, they'll, they'll come to the planet. They'll have their ship cloaked somewhere. They'll get in a car or create a car or whatever they do. And bam, there they are. They're right there for you or the other two friends of yours. Yep. And it's happened to them constantly. When we get together, our stories are so completely lined up. Like even Mm -hmm. to this day, like just right now, even one of the ones that was with me that day, she's um actually she's here in my state, but she needs to go back to her other state um, where, where her kids are, where, you know, she came from and right. she's just had no way to do it. And she's like, there's just no way. And I'm not sure what it's going to happen and this and that. Well, somehow a person, she got in contact with them. They are going to drive her vehicle and let her have a place to stay and assist her all the way and be there for her. And like, I don't know how it's even possible. It seems unreal that she's yeah, getting this type of assistance yeah. from a stranger. Yeah. See, everything has a cosmic divine situation. And I don't even call it supernatural because I consider it actually very uh for someone who's having a contactee experience the three of you are contactees in a very beautiful way what i mean by that is you're contactees with angelic beings of light that come from their own planetary systems the angelic beings have a connection with all three of you uh and i guess if you had more time to sit down with each angelic being like the one you've been communicating with and have a cup of coffee you probably can learn a lot about where they come from but because they will only come for that only time. And plus, I think the angelic being knows that you have a husband that has a hothead, that they're not going to be hanging around saying, let's go inside and have a cup of coffee in my house because your husband's not going to have any of it because he's afraid, you know. But that potential possibility, this is what I'm getting. If you want to have contact with that angelic being away from your house and have a place and say, can we meet at a local coffee shop in a uh, neutral area, I bet you that can happen in an instantaneous minute. You know why? You're telepathically in communications with that being now. You've been gifted the ability of being a telepathic communicator. And now that I've listened to your story, I'm going to give you some information. I want you to take the initiative 
to make contact with them when you uh, are in an area where there's maybe a little diner or something and uh, saying, can you come here? I want to learn about where you're from. Can we have lunch together? Find a neutral place that will be not a place where your husband's going to be going out there, you know, with a hammer or something. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't even know your husband, but I know enough about what you told me about him. I don't think I'd want to sit down and have lunch with him, you know? Yeah, he probably wouldn't want to do that with you either, though. So no, probably I know, I'd probably I, I probably would uh, have him getting angry at me, and they say, "You're done being angry. Now let's have a cup of coffee." Right, I know. <laughs> but yeah, well, and I then there was you. just one other time that, okay. um, and it was very brief, but it was literally a round, huge round object. But this one mm. was parked. And I saw it out the side of, and I was traveling, so it was a very glimpse, small glimpse of this. Um, it was another thing, just like that other thing, the same energy, the same feeling, but there was wow. something outside of the thing. There was two beings right. that were there, and they were somewhat like unloading or loading mm -hmm. something or something. I'm not sure. So it was such a quick glimpse, but it was the same exact thing. And I saw it with somebody else too. But with that person. Beings, can you tell us what they looked like? They the were beings? kind of like, I would say like a, a grayish um, color. Grayish color. Somewhat of a grayish. Yeah, like purple, mm. purple and gray. Grayish purple. Purple and gray, interesting. And did they look human like you look human, like I look human, if you were to look at them, if they had a better look um, at them? I, I I, mean, they were standing up looking in a human form, but okay. it was almost like you knew that they weren't like right. that, you know? Like, you could tell. Like, were they that different wasn't... than Were they different than the angelic man that was visiting you? Yes. Were they different? They were different, okay. Yeah, they were different. Okay. So, but the thing is, is that honestly, I don't know if this is too like far out there, but nothing's I also too far believe, out in this show. <laughs> I also believe that there's bad, you know, energy. There's bad, like you yeah. know, and I feel like some of the bad ones got, you know, were trying to come in to destroy my life and got darn, oh. darn near very close to doing it. Um, Let me ask you a question. You know what? Now that you said that, um, I wasn't planning on doing this. I think you're very blessed. I would like to. If how 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 much of my show do you know about my show? Um, not too much. Okay. So what happens by speaking of far out things? How about if I tell you that I am connected with the Ashtar Command, which you probably have never really heard of? They are Ashtar Command represents angelic planetary systems. Uh, star people from other planets that are Christed beings of light. That's the people I work with. I came here from off planet. I'm human, physically informed, but I can switch my consciousness right now to a cosmic related consciousness. People have seen me do it. Uh, I've helped people uh, with space people coming to their homes and going after negative ETs, and we've caught the negative ETs. We've quarantined them, and we've taken implants out. I haven't done it. We have space people from the command that are medical people that are Christed beings of light, men and women that have taken implants out. We did this with two people on my show last night. Now, I know you haven't been implanted, but just the fact that you said that there's some negative stuff going on, trying to interfere with your life that are not from this world, what I want to do is I want to give you a little background of what I do. And I wanted to ask you if you'd let me do this right now on the show. I'd like to bring some Christed space people to your location in two seconds. And it's very beautiful. They're about nine, about eight, about seven to eight feet tall, men and women. They come from off planet and they are from other planetary systems of light. They are very Christed beings of light, of love, and they are medical people. They're not like earth based doctors. They're way beyond that. And uh, uh, you don't have any implants, but I'd like them to come and help you to make sure that they clear all the energies and protect you from any negative ETs trying to interfere with the angelic beings that are that are able to communicate with you. Because the negative ETs, when they see you're having contact with the angelic beings, they're going to try to go in there and try to stop it. It seems like that's what they were trying to do. Yeah. 
how would you like us to make sure that never happens again? Yeah, that would be great. Okay. So we're going to do something here that I hadn't planned on doing because now I hear the full story. I'm going to send a space. I'm going to have you close your eyes with me here. I want you to take a deep breath, clear your mind of all your thoughts. We're going to do this thing right now. Give me a second. I have to switch over. I want my moderators to be very clear. All my moderators, please be aware of anybody on here that's negative to just block them. If anyone comes in here with any any snide remarks, take them right out. I don't care who they are. Um, we're going to do this thing. I want you to keep breathing in and out of your nostrils until you feel relaxed. Tell me when you feel at peace and relaxed. a strong sense of uh, joy and excitement that I don't know if it's right, but I do feel okay, peaceful. Okay. So I'm going to bring the ship over there right now. In about three seconds, there'll be a spaceship about 20,000 feet above your location. Whereabouts are you right now in general? What state? Um, Arizona, Phoenix. Arizona? Okay, no problem. We're going to send 10 of the Ashtar Command people off the ship. They're going through on the outside of your location of your home. There's going to be five on the outside doing some work. They're going to be checking the perimeters of your property. The spaceship we have over your location is scanning the area and making sure there's no negative ETs in the region that are trying to influence you or interfere with your connections with the angelic beings. Give me a moment. There's two women and three men from the command and our medical team that are now in your house. Um, you can keep your eyes closed, please. Um, they're going to check the energy in all your rooms. They're, they're just seeking any energies that have been implanted there by these negative ETs that are trying to interfere with the angelic contact you've been having and that you can still have. The negative ETs don't want you to have that contact. It's very apparent, and we're going to stop them from trying to stop you. We're going to do that tonight because we're having none of this stuff. I can tell you right now, brothers and sisters, this is not happening. Um, they're going to present themselves to you. Um, they're going to, in a friendly gesture, uh, one is going to touch your right your right uh, shoulder and one your left shoulder, and you're gonna you'll you'll feel them in a minute. That's their greeting of saying hello that they're there. Take your time, don't respond quickly. Just let uh, clear your mind. You'll know when they're they're actually physically touching your shoulder. and relax. Our space people are with you. Clear your mind, don't let your mind interfere with this. One of them is going to touch your head gently on the top. Uh, one of the other medical people, they're doing that to, they're saying they're going to do that to activate a protection of light around you. And they should be touching your head in about a moment or two. Relax. When you do feel it, let me know. There's no rush here. How do you feel? You feel it okay. They are with you. They're telling me that they love you. 
They come from the Christed levels of light, and they're going to protect you from here on in. What's going to happen is uh, they will find the point in origin of the negative ETs that are trying to interfere with the angelic beings, and they're going to find these ETs that are negative, and they're going to quarantine them. They're going to go after them after they leave your location. They're going to, one of our ships is going to go and find them, and we're going to stop them tonight. Those ETs have no idea what they're going to get in for, but they're going to be stopped. Uh, the Ashtar Command's hiding none of this. Um, you, know, what, you know, this kind of interference, if they had their way, the negative ETs, they would physically try to do stuff that is really not good, but they're going to be stopped. We're going to stop them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, you're very loved. You have a beautiful soul. What they're trying to do, the negative ETs, they, wanna, they want to interrupt your connections with the angelic people. They're trying to stop the connection because they look at you as a threat if you connect with the angelic people. The other part of it is that you are connected with the angelic people. The angelic people, um, from where they come from, you come from where they come from. You are actually, you know, you're in human form. You are also an angelic being of light. You're uh, in your human form, in your space form, uh, your body exists in stasis, meaning you have an angelic female body and you do have a family off planet and uh, that the space person that was visiting you, the angel, these are people connected to your angelic family. They, that's why they are coming to you, because you are connected to them. They are your family. Uh, I'm not talking about your earth family. I'm being told, um, hmm, give me a moment. They are, they are very connected to you. You know, there's a very connection. There's a, uh, it's almost impossible to put into words. You are... Uh, energetically connected to that male uh, being, that angelic being. There's others, there's a female, there's a family of people. Uh, uh, you are very connected. You and your off-planet world come from an angelic planetary system. Do you understand? I believe that. That's where you're from. I'm like, my consciousness is like really tuned into this right now. I mean, I'm like so tuned into this right now. You're just an incredible person. You have so much light in you. Uh, you're on a very beautiful soul. You're very loved. They love you very much, you know. I love them too. I know you do. Thankful. And you can let yourself cry if you wish to, because you should have your tears of joy never held back. You have to be who you are, always. Thank you. I love you Always too. stand in your light, always stand in your light. And when it comes to your husband, be strong. Be the light that you are. You're the teacher, he's the student. He will have to accept who you are and he will have to learn who you are. And if he doesn't want to learn who you are, he can go somewhere else and find somebody who is as angry as he is and do what he does. Because you deserve better than that. You do. Thank you. They're going to stay with you, you know. The, the ten of the space people, they will stay with you till Friday night. They're going to stay Earth time. They're saying they'll stay with you till Friday evening at midnight, and then they will go back on the ship. They're putting a, uh, an energy protection in, around your home in Arizona. It'll be a, it's going to be invisible. They're putting a shield of energy around your body. Close your eyes for a minute. They're putting a shield around you that's going to protect you from everything that is not of the highest good. They're going to protect you completely now. They're at one with you. Brothers and sisters, my name is Commander Alion. Like I said, I'm not from this planet. I am human, but I work with my space people, the Ashtar Command, a Christed being of light, and they are Christed beings of light for many planetary worlds of peace. Understand. And if you don't understand, let go of your belief systems. In order to understand, you must let go of what you've been taught on Earth in order to understand what I'm doing here. You have to let go.
How do you feel? I feel at complete peace. I feel compressed. Yes. I can see it in your eyes. You know, I can see a much happier person now. No confusion, no un, no dis understand misunderstanding of who you are. No no excuses to say well maybe it was something else. What we've just done is let you know that what you have been experiencing is real. They're your space family, the space person that was in the white vehicle, the pickup truck, then came back later on a few years later. They are connected to you. They are your space family. So. The next time they come, you're to meet. I want you to plan a meeting with them at a diner somewhere in the desert. Will you do that? Yes. If you do that, they will come. The space person, the person, the uh, male, he does have a mate and other people with him. Ask him to bring the others with him and meet at that diner in the desert. That's what I'm being told to tell you. Okay. I want to thank you. Thank you so much. And what is your first name? Crystal. Crystal. What a beautiful name, Crystal. I want to thank you for being on the show, Crystal. Thank you so much for having me. And I want I you to come on in the future. I want you to feel free to be a guest in the future. Let me know what happens with that meeting. And also keep me uh, uh, in tune with how you're going with your contact with the angelic being. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And telling all the, all the light side, thank you so much for intervening in my life and setting this meeting, this divine meeting that we had tonight. Thank you so much to everybody. And I can't wait to see what the future holds. I can't wait to hear the stories. All right, we're going to just uh, uh, bring it down gently here. And uh, let me just do this here. Thank you so much. And this is encounters. Okay. I want to say it really clear. I'm not from this world. Whether people believe it or not, I don't care. The ones that don't believe it, I'll take you out in two seconds. So you have a choice to make. If you think what we do here is funny, I'll take you out in two minutes, two seconds. See, what I'm doing here is real. The work we're doing here is real. Helping the people is real. Coming to Earth is real, you know? Uh, I'm not your typical talk show host interviewing people in a big studio with a big microphone, but a nice studio. So now I'm focused on you. Who else has got, I want, I, I want some new people here that have had experiences. If you're having contact experiences, that we call a contact experience, I want to hear the story. Ascending Shaman, good evening. Yeah, Angel, we'll get to you in a little bit for sure. I just want to see what's happening out here. How many people are having contact experiences out here? And don't feel afraid to tell me. You know, I treat every guest with uh, respect, and I want to hear those stories. Deanne, I'm going to try to bring Deanne up because she's been trying to get up here forever. Deanne, try to come on. I just sent you a request. Go to the multi-guest option. Jennifer Morass says, I think I was abducted when I was pregnant. An ascending shaman, I'm gonna also follow you. Oh, we got you, oh, we are following you, okay. So I want people that are really having experiences to step up. You know, don't be afraid now. I want to know. I want to see who's out there. I'm going to be, and I make the decision of who I bring up here. So uh, let's see. <clears throat> I'm going to look here. People can come into the guest request area. <coughs> I will get to the people. I, I'm just going with my uh, instincts. I want to see what people's stories are. If anyone is brand new here for the first time, has never ever come forward out of the closet about your experiences, I really do want to hear your stories. If you've been 
having beautiful contact experiences. Um, yeah, so I don't know where my my moderators are. Are my moderators out here? Any of my moderators? Let's see if any of my moderators are out here. Because they aren't, then I'm going to go in here and I'll take and I'll block anyone out here that causes any problems on the show. Uh, for the majority, um, the majority of our people are really good, but I will take people out. Uh, let's see. Angel has been waiting for a long time. Angel. Okay, where's Angel? Okay, we'll bring Angel on for a few minutes, and then there's a few people in the queue here. I'll bring Angel on for a few minutes from Africa, and then I'm going to bring some other people here as well. So I will get to you. Everyone take a deep breath and relax. There's no rush here. It's actually 1.22 in the morning already. I can't believe it. Um, okay, Angel, good evening from, uh, from South Africa. How are you? I'm good, Commander. How are you? Good. So we're gonna, we had you on a little bit this morning. I'm going to bring you on for a few minutes to go with what you're dealing with, and then um, I'm going to try to deal with all these other people in queue. But but I'm getting a lot of feedback. I'm yeah, getting a lot of feedback. Yeah. Yeah, yes, Commander. Yo, because I called yesterday. You say I, I should come back today. I was telling you yesterday that since the, the people came to take me, like, teach me how to fly, you see. Now it seems like I'm flying every day on A and I can balance myself flying everywhere. And the dream that I was telling you yesterday that yo, I was given an opportunity on I was on A, then I was seeing pictures flipping people that I know that they were swiping on my face, swiping, but I choose one person. The person is living in Nigeria that I choose. He's my boyfriend. And I said his name, Alex, okay. When I said his name, within minutes, I find myself inside his room. I was like, hmm. yo, this thing is happening serious. And like, I ask, him, I ask myself, am I a time traveler or something? What is happening? The, my boyfriend was sleeping on, on his bed, like sleeping mm -hmm. there, wearing, wearing his black vest. And I said, standing next to the curtain, what is happening? And at the same time, I was losing my, my breath, like I wasn't breathing well. I seen that this thing is happening serious, like in real. And I said, closing my, I closed my eyes and say, I want to go home. Then within minutes, like, whew, I found myself and I wake up. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened. Yeah. So that's <laughs> interesting. You could be, you're having experience. Well, let me put you on mute for a minute to answer your question. Whoops. Uh, all right. So I'm going to put you on mute for a minute so I don't feed back on your thing. So what I see, Angel, is that you're having these experiences that you're going, I think, going out of body. Uh, you're physically, uh, when you say you're flying, you're physically living your physical body to do that. And when you say you're going to your boyfriend's in Nigeria and you're appearing in his room, that's because you're actually elevating out of your body to travel to where he is, and that's not just, and that's considered astral traveling. So that's a, astral traveling is a very real thing for a lot of different people. I think you are actually experiencing astral traveling out of your physical body while you're sleeping, and you're actually able to do exactly what you're saying to do, what you call flying, you're actually traveling into wherever you want to go. There's no, there's no like uh, limitation, so to speak. And the, what we do know of astral travel or astral projection out of body, uh, or Merkaba states, is that they are real, they do exist if people study them. Astral traveling for many, many people, I've heard stories of over the years in my uh, experience on radio uh, with these stories, they are real. And uh, so I think you're having that experience of what you call astral traveling. I'm gonna turn your mic on here. I think I'm gonna turn your mic on. I'm gonna try, there we go, wait a minute. You can turn the mic on from your end there, Angel. On your mic, just press the button. There you go. Yeah. 
yeah i have press it on yeah yes and i don't know what is happening because it's like i'm losing my breath at the same time when this thing is happening and i cannot stop it it's like i find myself on air like flying and i'm not afraid to fly anymore like they give me power at that time to fly. Before, when I was flying, before them coming, I was flying and I dropped down. I was flying and I can drop down and at the same time I was losing power. As for now, when I'm on air, even if maybe someone is attacking me, I can protect myself, like fly, fly, fly. And this, mm -hmm. there is this another dream where um, I feel like I'm scared of because, okay, I was like in another place. There, that place was near a river or something like that there were so many people they celebrate so many people we so politics so many people they were coming wearing suits so the famous people okay i get there at the, and i found myself there they were getting the, the people they were doing they were doing so crazy things like killing people doing all of those things and hmm. I found myself there, I have to return back, and when I return back, they said, where are you going to? And I said, yeah, I forgot something there, and I have to go and pick it, and I go. Then I found a car there, a car was standing there, they said, hey, come, come, come. And I came, and I get inside. The people, I, f I feel like I know these people when I get inside the car, and I say, and I say to them, I did not ask, who are you guys? And I say, hey. I, you, you take so long to come. Why, why did you take so long to come? They say, no, we did not take so long. And I said, I've been missing you for so long now. And there was this another person there at the back of the car. I sit next to her. She was like blue in skin, blue color in skin. It's and okay. I, Let me stop you. You're okay. saying the, the woman uh, was a, like a blue, a blue, radiant blue? Blue skin, like the skin was blue, and I did not feel scared of her. I feel like I know this person and say, you take so long to come. I've been waiting for you for so long. Mm -hmm. I feel like I know them and we were talking, then the cars go. They came and saved me at that place. I can say like that. And I go hmm. because they were killing people and they say this different people and other people, they were doing so crazy stuff. They said, this place they do so dumb those things and this place they do mm -hmm. all of those things you see and it's so I, crazy it's so crazy what I, what I think you need to do is um slow down a little bit with what you're doing and i think you need to also uh, hearing your story i think you need to do some meditation do some protection of light energy around you there's a few things you're going to need to do now uh let me just do yeah. this for you I, I need you to do this. Um, uh, we're going to stay on for just a few more minutes here, but I need you to do this. I need you, number one, to do a Christed meditation on a regular basis, like 20 or 30 minutes maybe, and do it daily. Uh, I need you to focus and listen to uh, higher frequency uh, music, uh, which will help. You need to put a protection around you because when you're doing this, when you're elevating out of your body, yeah, you're, I don't feel there's like a protection around you, so to speak, and you need to be able to do that because if you're not protected, other ET energies could be attracted to what you're doing and could affect you. So you want to make sure that you're protected. <laughs> Excuse me. You want to make sure that you're physically protected. And so I want you uh, tonight to, after we get off the show with you, to start doing a meditation like spend 30 minutes, uh, use some ambient uh, Christed space music. It's called Christ Consciousness Music. They have it on YouTube. Uh, listen to the music, meditate, clear your thoughts out, and stay focused within Christ Consciousness. And this way, what you want you to do is put a protection around yourself. You can do this. Uh, just say, I'm going to put a protection around my body of light, and that will protect me. So when I do go and have these experiences, I will only allow Christed beings of light to interact with me. So you control the narrative of your experience. If you don't control the narrative of your experience, then any negative ET that sees your light is going to be attracted to it. And the one thing you want to do is protect yourself always from that, that other kind of energy. You know what I mean? So I want you uh, to do that. I'm going to bring one other person up before we uh, get into the closing of the show. 
uh, but I want you to do that because that's really important. Let me just do this here. You can un unmute your microphone. Okay. Yes, Commander, yes. I need protection, serious, because this thing, I can't control it anymore. It's like I'm flying every day, and I've been called another, and they chased me one day. Like, I was running, but there were people that they were, like, standing on tree there watching me, and I was chasing by so some soldiers. They would chase me, they chased me, and I, I was hiding next to a rock. And they come one by one to look at me, but it was like I turned into invisible or something like that because they did not see me anymore. And when I look back, I saw five people, like three women and two men. They were standing there on a tree, like they were like watching me or what, I don't know. But I feel safe with those people, they were watching me there. And they said, no, we don't see her. You don't see her. the people, the soldiers will come one by one to check up on me. And mm -hmm. say, you don't see her. After that, another person came and said, okay, my grandmother is calling you. We have to go. And I fly. She was, she was pulling my feet, like holding my feet. I fly with her mm -hmm. to the grandmother's place there. And she said, okay, I called you here because I want to teach you medicine to cure teeth and to call the, these things that is coming next in, into some neck of people there. It's like balls or something like that to remove those things. Mm -hmm. And she teach me, and she teach me, I was flying on air and I was balancing well, 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 like, like a bed or something like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like that, I mm -hmm. need help, like, I need help of protection, something like that, because I can't control now, it. I, are you having it happen at night or during the day? One of the, uh, Cat Life is asking one of my people in the audience, does this happen during the day or during the night? It happened at night. At night, okay. So before night. I let you go, I just, I just, I, because I'm running out of time a little bit here, I want you to take time to work with price consciousness. I want you to, um, to meditate uh, using higher vibrational music, which is Christed conscious ambient music. music. And I want you to, I want you to center yourself and get centered. Uh, relax a little bit. Come, your energy is all over the place. You need to kind of relax a little bit. You're not relaxed. And when you do that, you'll be able to center in that Christed frequency. If you're going to travel, you'll be able to be well protected with a shield around your body. Okay. 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 That's 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 my home. That's your homework. That's your assignment from tonight's show. Okay. All okay. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, mm. Angel. I I thank, thank you, you. Self, Tough Actor, for being here, and I hope you have a beautiful, mm. beautiful day. <laughs> thank you so much, Commander. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take Angel down, and uh, I'm gonna get to um, ascending. I'm bringing ascending up. Ascending might be my last guest for the night. I think. Good evening, Ascending Shaman. Commander, how are you how doing are you? this evening? It's been a crazy night, but beautiful. Uh, how are you doing? Um, I've been I've been hanging in there. I've been having a lot of um, uh, good and bad experiences that are uh, you know paranormal as well as alien in nature. Yeah, so we stay away from the paranormal as a rule, but the uh, ET stuff we'll definitely get into. Um, so. There is constantly this UFO that hangs above my house. And it specifically, it, it's this crazy, loud, blaring, rumbling frequency, both high and low. Mm -hmm. And um, it would appear only one of my dogs and my cat can hear it, but nobody else can really hear it. Hmm. Um, it's, been, it's been driving me crazy, and whenever I talk to it, it it didn't give me an answer until tonight which was right when i joined your live and surprisingly right when i joined your live i went outside and sure enough i saw a ufo that was almost trying to look like a plane but the thing mm -hmm. is is it was speeding up and then slowing down like it was trying to i don't know and then there was something following it that was going way close and i, I think it was like it was way slower and i think it was like one of ours like um 
watching it. And then so I, I went back inside and I'm like, wow, this is interesting because it went away. And yeah. sure enough, um, I'm eating pizza and then all of a sudden this crazy light shined through my window. And I really? thought that was so weird because uh, right when I got off work, right, I'm, I'm crossing to the parking lot to get to my electric bike to go home. And there's all these lights in, in the parking lot. And it was nowhere near nighttime. And all of a sudden, all the lights in the, the parking lot lit up and flashed right at me. And then really? went away. And I was like, whoa, like somebody is trying to communicate with me. And I think it's, I think it's my people because the, the men in black know me as, um, as, as an agent. They know me as um, chief specialist, chief, chief coordinator, uh, battery. Um, I have like over 50 different call signs. I've done a lot of different uh, psychic operations with them um, okay, to so help you, the realm. So, for, for, so with our audience, you've worked with the physical men in black, you're saying, correct? Um, but then are the things I was seeing, I started, I started meeting. Your, your broadcast is being cut out on your audio. You're saying that you worked with the men in black? Oh crap! Yes, sir. There's audio. I'm trying to get okay. better it... signal. Maybe I should. Where are you? Can you hear me? The people that I was seeing in my head. Yeah, I can hear you. Crap! Okay. There it goes again. Okay, so I got a feeling about something here. They're they're running uh, they're running interference on us right now, and every time it happens, there, there's a UFO that's flying over me as I'm talking to you. Okay, let me ask you a question. Did you hear that? Uh, I heard that now. So let me ask you a question. They're interfering with the wrong person here. I just want them to know that. They're interfering with the Ashtar Command and they're gonna have a big problem right now if they don't stop the interference because I'm gonna send a spaceship over your location in two minutes. I want them to understand this loud and clear. They're dealing with the Ashtar Command. My connections off planet are very, very strong. I work with the Ashtar Command, and they're dealing with the wrong people. So let me ask you a question right now. If you want me to, I'm going to send a spaceship 20,000 yes, feet above your location, and we're going to send 20 Ashtar Command people there right now to take care of this situation. Uh, would you like some help? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that would okay. be great. I would say the, the Navi are with you. I know they work with the Ashtar, so... Well, we're going to do something. Well, um, you I work do with the Navi, so I know they're, they're one and the same. I want... I want you to close your eyes. Okay. I want you to relax and take a deep breath about three or four times, please. Now, this is going to be interesting oh, God, people that are me. watching this. We're going to be sending a spaceship to deal with these people, the men in black, whoever they are, and we're going to stop this thing right now. Right now. Okay. The commander is in no mood for this garbage happening with people. I mean, that's not going to happen. Not on my cosmic time. So we're going to send a ship over. Where's your location in general? Um, I'm in St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm You're outside. Missouri. Of... Yep. Yeah, they're trying to interfere with the broadcast. They're not going to do it. You might as well stop. Might as well stop trying to interfere with him talking. It's going to be put to a stop right now. Uh, we're sending a spaceship over your location in St. Louis, Missouri, about 20,000 feet above your location. We're sending 20 Ashtar Command people to that location. Oh, our, ship is, our ship is scanning the skies, and we'll take care of whatever negative right, I, I got a, I got a spaceship you. above. Yep. I think I see them. I think yeah, we got multiples. A, yeah. Are you seeing the ship yeah, they, that they, I just they sent flashed, over? They flashed. They flashed at me, so I looked over in that direction, and uh, okay. they, they look like they're, they're stars, but they're not. Okay. Well, I'm sending one ship. There's one big ship I'm sending over to your location. It'll be one singular craft. It is a, a big spaceship, so it's not uh, like a multiple amount of ships. All I need to do is send one okay. ship to you. We're sending 20 right, Astro Command people on the ground level. They're going to be 10 of them. Uh, are going to be coming into your house just to let you know they're there. Uh, when they come in, in two seconds, they will be inside your room. They're going to check all the rooms in your house. They're going to communicate with you uh, in a moment. There's 10 on the outside of your house, and they are aware of the 
uh, people within the government operations that are trying to interfere with situations right now. They're going to be dealt with. Uh, any negative ETs that are working with the government are going to be dealt with right now. So, Shaman, as we're here with you at the moment, I am now working in my Astro Command mode again. Excuse me. And uh, I'm just in, you know, I'm in one of the modes here when I get this way and we're dealing with the negative ETs and the government people that are trying to stop people from having direct contact. That doesn't work anymore. Nope. Not anymore. So they are in the room. You should be feeling the energy. They are about seven, eight feet tall. These are men and women from the Astro Command ship. Their energy is very strong and very different than uh, any lower vibrational ETs or beings that have tried to interfere with you in your life. Just relax. I'm definitely hearing something all around me. Yeah, there's 10 space people in the room right now with you. Uh, 10 are on the outside of the house. They're also uh, checking the perimeters around your area where you are in Phoenix. And the spaceship of the command is scanning the whole region in the mountainous areas and in the desert areas around you. Uh, and if they find any government agents trying to interfere with this, they're right now I want the command to stop government interference on his phone. I want them to block them from hearing everything he's talking about with us. I want the command to block the government agents radio equipment and uh, make sure they cannot uh, no longer hear him speaking with us, nor can they interfere with his phone. I would like the command to do that right now, please. They're really working hard, you know. So in this situation, folks, we're not dealing with an abduction. Yeah, they... we're dealing with we're dealing with government interference with Shaman and his life, and we're going to put a stop to it right now. Or if I got to see anything. They're going to, the command is also working to make sure that your phone is protected so they cannot listen in to your communications. They're doing that right now. Um, that would be good because one of the things that's been happening is um, all my electronic devices, like uh, my phone and my TV at times, it, it's like the uh, radiation within it is being amplified and being directed at me. Right. And so That's it gives because, me a terrible yeah. headache and then I have to turn yeah. everything off and hydrate mm -hmm. and like focus on my energy work and all that in order mm -hmm. to, to get it to stop. Yeah. Well, I want the command knowing this, I want the command to take all his electronic devices in the house and make sure that they are uh, whatever uh, devices that the government has put into his equipment in the house is to be taken out. Take all listening devices out that the government has put into his location Take them out and destroy them and destroy those devices right now, please. You see the commander on and back up. Yeah, the space people are staying here and they're going to, they're still there. They're not going anywhere. They'll leave uh, when uh, on myself and when they also understand that it's, they've completed the task, then they will go on the ship. They're staying and they will stay there actually for 24 hours. They're going to stay there till Friday. With you, I mean. They're putting protections right. around your area. Uh, they're also making sure that any government uh, devices that were put in your home when you weren't around, they're taking the government devices out of your home and they're going to destroy them. So the government uh, is playing around with the wrong people here. Especially with this show. Oh. With the commander and the and the Astro Command, they're playing with the wrong people. I want you to feel at peace. I want you to relax, take a deep breath. Relax. Everything will be okay. Just relax, please. Uh, one of the space people, one of our medical people, is going to touch your forehead. Uh, she's about eight feet tall. Um, in a minute, okay. you shall feel her. Just keep your eyes closed. Don't think about it. Just uh, relax, please. I'm communicating with her. Please uh, touch the forehead. What she's going to do is work on your consciousness. Okay. 
Uh, she wants you, she's going to take any fear, any discomfort in terms of uh, they're making uh, these uh, government people have been trying to make you kind of nervous. She's going to take that all away from you in like two minutes. Do you understand? Yes, Commander. Relax. When you feel her touch, let me know, please. Take your time. Please let him know you're there. Yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm feeling Stay something. Yes. Yeah. Please. I'm here. Okay. She's touching your forehead. I'm. 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 I'm receiving telepathic communication. Yeah. Yes. I'm, def I'm definitely feeling something all over, and I'm actually. I'm seeing symbols and stuff in my head and stuff. Yeah, she's communicating energy. with you right now. Yep. She's about eight feet tall. She's going to work on so your she's consciousness She's trying to direct tonight. my focus. Yes, she is. Towards somewhere else. Yeah. She's coming to me as like a, a glowing, a glowing being. Yeah. That's, how, that's how I'm seeing her through my energy. Yes. Yeah. She, if she was to physically appear, she's yes, very beautiful. Yes, I can tell. She has a very beautiful, she's very pretty. Christed energy. Yes, yeah, she is. Very beautiful. I'm linked up to the space people that are in your house. I am telepathically uh, active at the moment, so I can uh, communicate with them. So, brother, they're going to stay and work with you. Um, there's nothing to worry about. They're also going to take care of any interference from the government in your life. The government's been interfering with you for a lot of years. They're going to just, uh, they're going to find any devices that have been put secretly in your house and around your property. And all those devices are going to be destroyed. Uh, and they're also going to work on your phone to block any communications or monitoring of your phone there's by the again. government. They're going to block the government interference on your phone and you'll not have interference ever again. So please, for our other people in the technical field of our Ashtar Command people that are there, please okay. work on his phone tonight and uh, make sure it's uh, protected and block out any Earth-based uh, listening devices to his uh, to what he's doing here, please. Thank you. Sorry, I, I, obviously, they wanted to lead me out of the house, um, and now they're telling me to, to go back. So I appreciate all the help. Just um, uh, please don't get yourself in any trouble. I don't want any harm to come to you. No, there's no harm so, to come um, to me. You know. I, have more pow I have more power than they do, the people that are trying to interfere with you. If they start dealing with me, I'll have a spaceship take me up on the ship in two minutes. I have Ashtar people in my house. I have a couple of the Ashtar Command people in my house constantly here. I'm very well protected. I'm very well protected, and if they knew anything was going to happen, I would be taken on the ship in two minutes. So nothing's going to happen to me. Oh, glad to hear uh, that. What's going to happen? What's going to happen is that what's it's what's going to happen to them? The government people that are doing this, they're trying to stop the beautiful things that are going to be coming, and they are not going to be able to do it. They can't do it. We won't let it happen. I speak on behalf of the whole Ashtar Command. On the whole command, I speak for them. And I will be speaking to the whole world at some point soon on a spaceship. Now, if you don't know about that, that's another story for another night. But that will be happening. And I've I expressed it once I knew that it's going to happen. We're going to be, uh, I've told this story before, no government in the world will be able to stop what's going to be happening. No government. All this stuff is coming to an end, I folks. It's all coming to an end. I hear and you. I'll bring that um, information. On my show, you're going to hear my, this on Saturday, Saturday night. Is our Astro Command night? On Saturday night. my Commander have... Boris. Commander Boris? Go ahead. No, you're going to yeah, say... He, uh, um, he's, he's, my, he's my field commander uh, for the MIB. He, uh, 
he's kind of pissed. He was saying that he's trying, he's trying to help you. And he's saying something about cease and desist and we're already helping shaman. We're just overloaded. Well, uh, to, if, if they really try, by to the way, you, what's up? <laughs> yeah. What they need to do is just relax and understand that the people I work with of the Ashkar command are coming from many planetary systems. And we're here for the whole planet, not just for one person. And uh, we're yeah. going to make sure there are no negative influences of ETs anymore. The, the negative ETs are being kicked off the planet. And uh, when contact happens, there will be no negative ETs. I can assure people that that will stop. But that's a that's a story for that'd Saturday be, night. So Saturday night is Ashford great. Command night. I appreciate night. the and, assist. Yes, and uh, if possible, I'll have my friend April come on. So uh, Shaman, thank you for being here. They're going to stay with you. Hey, thank you. God bless. Night. God bless you, man. You take care. All right. You as well. All right. Peace. All right. Well, I think uh, the commander has done a lot tonight here, you know. I think uh, I'm almost ready to call it an evening. Uh, it's been uh, another another one of those nights. Where do I begin? You know? Uh, hey, Kit Kat. I just want to say I love all of you, even the ones I don't even know. Okay, and Deanne, we have to get Deanne up here. I don't know why we can't get her up. I would ask the command to work on her phone. I asked the command to work on Deanne's phone to make sure that she's able to come up live. Uh, I, I definitely uh, would want to help Diane. Deanne, I mean, because I'm a little bit tired now. So it's been a lot of work. Uh, if you can please to send your gifts, uh, any gifts would be great. Go to my cash app. If uh, it takes a lot of work to do what I'm doing here, folks. So your support definitely uh, would be greatly appreciated uh, with your gifts right now, any gifts you want, that's up to you. If you can do the cash app and you've been given abundance, uh, please do to my cash app on my main page is a link. My Vemo is my cash app. Please share your gifts. So I'm going to hold off now and let people do gifting. I really do appreciate the gifts and I do want to get the on here. I'll try, I'll try to get the on here Friday night, but I, right now I'm just going to sit back and look for gifts to, show your support for the work we're doing with everybody here. Uh, you know, and now you see how we, we do things here, right? Butterfly, thank you. And feel free to give any gifts you like. I do have the whale. My cash shop, you can't see it here. Uh, it is actually in my bio. Let me see if I can bring that up. Um, that's really weird. It's not showing up in my bio. I'll put it up on my bio, but uh, if you go to my thing when I'm off the, off the live and you go to my profile, you'll see a link to my bio. I don't know why it's not showing up, but uh, yeah, the Vemo is the one. That's the Vemo. That's my app, the Vemo, the Venno or whatever you call it. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. And I do have the whale, so if people can do whales, uh, we do have the whale up tonight. So I'm trying to see how many whales. I got one whale. If anybody can give me some whales, that would be great. Pete, Star TV, thank you for the roses. I'm going to try to see if I can bring you up one more time. I don't know why we're having trouble doing this. So uh, a lizard just rang the ring doorbell twice. No lie. Woke me up. Timothy Davis. Thank you, Butterfly. Thank Peace Star TV. Okay, I'm going to, uh, I'll put the, thank you, uh, Brenna. I'm going to tomorrow night put my cash app on there. I'll put the link to the cash app on my main bio. So that will show up uh, right there. I'll make it easy for people to get to the, vet, to the Venmo app tomorrow night. I'll reset it. That's actually right, to his credit and Venmo, yeah. I'll set that link up for everybody tomorrow night, for sure. Uh, yeah. We're going to get Dion on here live. I'm committed to making sure she gets on here. I don't know why her phone won't let her do it. I don't understand why that's not happening, you know. 
it's been a long night here, folks. It really is. It's almost 2 in the morning on the East Coast. We'll be on here tomorrow night for all 100, 355 of you. Uh, everybody follow me. Everybody, we have 122,000 likes. We appreciate it. Everybody follow each other. I'm all about uh, community, about bringing people together uh, on this talk show. We really want to bring everybody together. And uh, it's been a lot of energy work tonight, too. I mean, you you can't understand how much energy it takes to do the work I just did tonight, even last night. Um, it takes a lot of work, you know, a lot of work. And this show is going to be on my YouTube channel tomorrow. So if you missed any part of the show, don't worry about it. My YouTube channel is Ashtar Command Spaceship News. Ashtar Command Spaceship News. You can see all my shows on there. This show will be added there. So anybody who's missed like a half hour or even the whole show and you're skating on here, uh, Connoisseur says it must be draining. It's not so much draining, but I am a little bit tired after doing the work. Um, yeah, Friday night will be on at 11. So it's not your normal situation for me because since I've been activated eight over eight months ago by the command to do what I'm doing, it is a lot of work. I feel a lot of love helping everybody and uh, I'm committed to doing this work with our spaceships coming over people's locations and I will continually do this when I need to. Divine 771, I love that name. Thank you for being here. Everybody, thank you for being here, man. I'm a little bit tired out from all the stuff here. So, uh, we're going to call it a night. I want to thank everybody for coming in and finding the show here. Uh, I appreciate it. And tomorrow morning, I'm going to have to get out to my micro farm and water my watermelon plants because I have watermelons growing and they need water. Uh, we had a little bit of rain the other day, but it's so hot out here that the, the ground dries up really quick. So tomorrow morning is going to be a bunch of water on all my watermelon plants and, uh, I might show you some pictures of my watermelons one night on here. Uh, maybe tomorrow night I'll show some pictures of what I'm doing. So, yeah, Lisa, thank you. I'm, I'm ready to just uh, do some meditation and prayer before going to sleep here. I want to thank everyone for being here. It's been a, a long night, and I am a little bit tired out. So I love you all. Everybody have a beautiful Friday. We'll see you tomorrow night on Encounters, a show that's out of this world. Take care, everybody. Be well. Yeah, yeah, you as well. Butterfly, yes. We send you our love, Butterfly. Thanks for coming on. We're going to get some rest here.